the bee. Tom Thomas! Hello. How come you're eating jam straight from out of the jar? Because it tastes so good. are very helpful and useful. How can a bee ever help us out? Bees are hard workers. They are constantly collecting nectar from flowers. Flying from flower to flower, bees transport pollen on their bellies. Thanks to this process of pollination, flowers produce fruit and seeds. In other words, bees help plants reproduce. The bees use the nectar they collect to make that delicious sweet honey loved by kids of all ages. And bee honey is not only delicious, it's also nutritious. So, I'm still afraid of it. What if it bites me? Bees don't bite, by the way. They sting ya. Ah! Ah! Well, now I'm gonna show you. Don't! The bee's the one who should be afraid, you tyrant. Yeah, you let it go, tyrant. Why are you calling me names? Who's stopping her? She can fly away if she wants. We need to show her the way out. Well, how? Here, little bee. Fly this way. Why don't you try going? <laughs> then what can I say? Don't move. It'll sting you. It doesn't want to sting. Both of you like to eat sweets. You like eating jam, and so does the bee. Why don't you carry Chusaka to the window? Go on. Fly. No. That's not going to work. You need to go and get more jam. Here, little bee. Yum, yum. Go on and fly. You're free. Let her eat first. Don't be greedy. I'm not being greedy. If she eats, she can make honey out of your jam. Long ago, people could only collect honey by destroying the nests of wild bees. And that went on until someone came up with the idea of taming those insects. They started by leaving enough honey for the bees to survive through the winter. People took care of bees in these hollows until they learned to build small houses for them called beehives. And a town made of these bee houses is called an apiary. Bees live and work together in the beehives making honey, while beekeepers take care of the bees and collect the honey. Bees are real team players. They tell each other where the best flowers grow. Do you know how they do it? One of the bees does a dance. And then the rest of the bees watch the dance and learn where they need to fly. You poor thing. Tom Thomas tired you out. I told you there's nothing to be afraid of. You see? She's just so nice and kind. I'm not afraid of her. She wouldn't let me eat my jam, that's all. Well, now it's time for you to fly away. Uh, whoa! She's playing rough here. I want to try. Uh-uh, Nolik. You're too little. You'll have to grow to do this job. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm down now. Now let's fly. Hey, Simka, the window's back there. I can see that without you. So how can I get you to turn around? Cool. Hooray! <laughs> She's listening to me. Woohoo! Don't miss the window. Now! Honeybee? Tiddish! Tom Thomas, do you have any more of that jam left? 
Yeah. What for? Bring it here. We'll get more bees to fly in. How come? What do you mean, how come? Because it's my turn for a bee ride. The baby doll. Tula, you gotta get out. We can't all fit in here. This time we'll take a ride, and next time you can. And I'm by myself again. Hey, don't worry. I'm gonna be getting such a cool car later today, Tula. Will it be a big one? It'll be big enough for all of you. Tom Thomas. Here, your toy came just like you wanted. Awesome! Wait, what is this? A baby doll? Ah! Oh, it's got to be some mistake. I'll find out for you. I'm calling them. It's good to be a kid. People take care of you, feed you, buy you toys, and read you bedtime stories. But in return, you have to listen to adults. Go to preschool, then school, and always remember to put on a hat. All kids dream about being a parent, at least for a little while. Because moms, they're just superhuman. Human moms can do laundry, cook meals, iron clothes, and check their kids' homework all at once. Fixie moms can fix irons and hair dryers and can teach young fixies how they can do it. It's a shame that you can't become a parent before you grow up, but you can have fun pretending to be one. That's why girls like to play with dolls. Boys usually don't like it, but I don't see why. Dads can be really cool, too. What am I supposed to do with this now? I'm not some kind of girl who plays with dolls. <laughs> hey there, come on now. That baby doll's a real cutie. Why don't you put it down and we can get back to racing? <coughs> wait, wait. The baby's hungry. He needs to eat. Tom Thomas, help me. <coughs> no, I won't. Won't you please? He's crying, don't you hear? <laughs> That's all? after that boy. But what if something terrible has happened? My dolly's eyes were shiny. Toes and fingers tiny. He never acted whiny. I love my dolly so. Now my life is gloomy. How this happened to me? I can't find my cutie. My dolly's gone, oh no. Oh no. Honey, don't be upset about the car. It's gonna get here soon. By the way, why did you put the doll in the cupboard? It was so hard to find. But is it still home? It's in the box over there. It's gotta go back to the store. My poor dolly's gone. Ma, ma. My dolly! We're 
supposed to send him back today. <gasps> Only I told Mom that I'd rather keep him. Hey, and what about your big new race car? Later. Did you do all this for me? You know... Papa! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> The night light. They're very close. I can feel them. Ah, help me! Help me! Help me! <gasps> That's all. You've had enough monsters. It's not good to watch these kinds of movies before bed. Mom, Mom, really, I'm not scared. Let me watch the end, would you? I told you, that's all. Well, good night, honey. <sighs> ah! Who's there? <sighs> They're very close. I feel them. enough electricity to go around. Hop. Everyone can probably remember walking into an empty room with the lights turned on. Or finding a TV on that nobody's watching. One little light or TV might not seem like much, but just imagine how many people are living on this Earth. Well, if everybody forgot to turn off the lights or TV when they weren't being used, the amount of wasted electricity would equal the amount of energy produced by a hundred power plants. And each of these power plants needs freight cars of coal or rivers of oil to keep running. And all that fuel has to be extracted and burned constantly. Now do you see how expensive burning a light bulb is for the Earth? So don't forget to turn off electrical appliances when you're not using them. It's so easy. Uh, who turned off the light? Looks like his position is left out. Ha ha. Anyway, he should get a penalty for wasting electricity. Uh. <gasps> Monsters. <laughs> hey, what do you think we are? Hockey pucks? Nolik, Simka, forgive me. Who did you think we were? Mm, monsters. Huh. Well, I see how you could mistake Simka for one, but obviously not me. <laughs> Tom Thomas, what are you doing? Why are you sleeping with the light on? I was so dumb. I watched this monster movie on TV before bed. Now I'm scared to sleep without the light on. And that dumb old monster flick, why were you watching it? I felt like getting scared. Ah! You're great at getting scared. Keep quiet, or we'll wake up your mom and dad. How am I going to fall asleep now? Here's a good idea. You can use a night light. A night light is a little light that humans who don't like to sleep in the dark use in their rooms. The night light has a dim glow. That's because it works with a special kind of light bulb that uses very little electricity. These kinds of light bulbs are called energy efficient. <laughs> That's hard to say. <laughs> and you can find night lights that use such low energy bulbs that they can work off of a battery. But you know there isn't a night light here. Huh. How would you get by without us? Tonight, I'm here to help you. I'm gonna be your night light. Look, right there. There's our lampshade. Th 
Thanks so much. You really are a friend indeed, Nolik. It was easy. Just go to sleep. Nolik. <sighs> Do you know any good stories? I know one about a big meat grinder. Nah, no way. You'd better tell me a story about a nice kind fixie. Ah, I know a good one. And here's how it goes. Grandpoose was working inside of a very big clock. Actually, the clock wasn't that big. And I'm not sure if it was Grandpoose, but it was a clock, I think. Nolix Q. Whoop! <laughs> Tom Thomas, you'll be late for school if you don't stop. School? <laughs> Don't you worry. <laughs> What's he breaking this time? This time, nothing. He's solving a Rubik's Cube, Nolik. Whose cube is it? <laughs> the Rubik's Cube is the most popular puzzle game in the whole world. It was invented by Professor Rubik from Hungary. A cube has six sides on it. And on a Rubik's Cube, each of these sides has nine squares that are all the same color. You start by mixing up the colors. To solve a Rubik's Cube, you have to turn the pieces, and you keep turning and turning them until each side is one solid color again. For instance, red or yellow or light blue. Huh, that's nothing. Hey, Tom Thomas, how long have you been messing around with this cube already? It's been three whole days of turning. Three whole days? We could solve that puzzle in five minutes, now couldn't we, Simka? Oh, really? Then go right ahead. I'm off to school. Well, you ready to show Tom Thomas who's boss? <laughs> Just count me out. Hey, I thought you said Rubik's Cubes are easy to solve. I never said anything like that. This problem is all yours, Mr. Bragger. All right, I'll figure it out myself. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> hey, Nolik, looks like you've got a problem. Oh, hi, Fire. Ugh. No, I'm good. Just solving this Rubik's Cube. Yeah? Can I do it with you? What, you can do it? Of course I can. How hard can it be? You'll see for yourself. Try getting all the red squares on one side. Piece of cake. Now hold it tight. Great, I'm with you. Ugh. Whoa! Like that? Class. Uh, and what about this side? What? This side's gotta be all blue. Okay, let's go fix it. There, like you wanted. Now what happened to the red side? Huh? Simka was telling me that on each side there has to be one color. Oh, like Sim could be able to do this? Simka can do it all. Well, if Simka can, then I can too. Oh! Fire! You busted the cube! I didn't bust it, I took it apart. Now let's put it together. And not just any way, but the right way. Puzzles are toys, games, or problems that force you to use your mind in a clever and creative way. Take a labyrinth, for example. In a labyrinth, the challenge is to find the one way to get through a series of tangled corridors. Another fun puzzle is a jigsaw puzzle. Here, you need to put together a picture out of many little pieces. For this, you need to not only pay attention, but be patient. And there are all sorts of puzzles for the computer. One popular computer puzzle is Tetris. In Tetris, different shapes fall down the screen, and you have to think quickly to get them to line up into rows. And solving puzzles isn't only a great activity for people, it's good for fixies, too. That's right, puzzles are like exercises for our brain. There, all done. No, you better hurry, because Tom Thomas is on his way home. Hi there, Simka. Just take a look at this. We did it. I can't believe it. How? Oh, it was a piece of cake. Simka, Nolik, I'm back. 
Well, I'm out of here. Ciao! Woohee! Wow! You really solved it! It was Nolik! Nolik, you are cool. So how? You see, first you break it apart into all of the pieces, and then you put it all huh? back together. No! That's cheating. You gotta turn the cube, not take it apart. Now I'll solve this cube, honestly. I don't think you can. Why are you so sure? I glued it together. Uh, how come? So you'll stop straining your brain with it. Now the cube will always be the right way. But if it doesn't turn, it's not a Rubik's Cube. Well, yeah. Now it's a Nolix Cube, right? The construction set. Tom Thomas. Huh? Why are you sitting in the dark? Because it looks better this way. Check it out. Oh, oh, look at that. What a beautiful castle this is. It's like out of a fairy tale. No, it's from my construction set. I put it together myself. Class. Oh, let's be knights. I love that game. And so does the old dragon. Lock the fair princess inside of the castle. I get to be the princess. Oh, where is the brave knight who will rescue me from the evil dragon? Hang on, I'll save you, Simka. No, look, you really don't look like a knight. You don't even have armor. Armor. Wait, hang on a second. A construction set lets you build lots of different things from a set of parts. Put them together like this, you've got a house. Like this, a car. Or like this, a spaceship. The parts might be made of metal and connected with screws. Some construction sets have plastic parts you click together. Other sets are models where the pieces are glued together. You can also find magnetic sets. Touch the parts together and magnetic attraction makes them stick. Beware, dragon! Already. And where is the castle? The planet has been attacked by robots! And they have destroyed the castle! Oh, and they've kidnapped me! And are you still a princess? Of course I'm still a princess! Oh, save me, brave knight! Right! <laughs> What's going on? This is a magnetic construction set, and your armor is made out of metal, so you got attracted to the magnets. <laughs> Tom Thomas, it's not fair. Unattract me. <laughs> okay. Oh, rescue me! Help me! You gotta save me! Hang in there. I'll be right back. I gotta change my costume. Simka, stay right there. And don't even think about running away. And so it goes. Everyone's abandoned the poor princess. Oh. Simka's my older sister. That's why she thinks it's okay to get bossy with me. But I don't let it get to me because she's very smart and a quick thinker. She knows gadgets better than just about anybody. It's always interesting with Simka. And she's really smart, too. She gets nothing but A's at school. Everyone in our class loves her. Only she and Verda don't get along too well. It's because of fire. Well, you get it. Sometimes Simka can be way too strict with me. You can't do this. You shouldn't do that. But if an exciting adventure comes along, she's always right there with us. Simka's brave. She's got the skills. Yeah, she's always ready to take on a challenge. I've got an awesome sister. But just keep that between us. Because if you tell her, it might go to her head. How long am 
I supposed to sit here? Hey, anyone? Hey! Help me! Saka, you give that back! Leave, leave this room. Are you okay? I can't leave you alone for a minute. Yeah, I think we're okay. Nola got here and saved me from Chusaka for real! Just like a real live knight! Oh, come on, pretty knight! I'm not kidding. You deserve to be one. And to protect every living creature from pesky Chusakas everywhere. I promise. <laughs> To be a knight, Sir Nola! Hooray! 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 Kitty! The spray can. Uh huh. Footprints. Just like I suspected. Are those your footprints? Not, Not ours. ours. Then what's on your shoes? What a mess I got into. Phew! <laughs> it's a bug spray! Elisa! <clears throat> what a terrible smell! What is it? It's poison! <clears throat> Why do we need poison? <clears throat> I've had this gnawing suspicion for quite a long time that something is living in our laboratory! And so, yesterday, after it got dark, I quietly dusted the table with flour. And so... Look! Don't you see? Footprints. And I want to destroy them. <gasps> destroy who? You really haven't figured it out? Cockroaches live here. A cockroach? That's what she <laughs> thinks you are. Eh, uh, what makes you sure that it's a cockroach? What else could it be? Well, uh, maybe a spider. Hmm. Well, spiders are cute. And nice, too. But then where is the spider where? Uh, uh, I don't know. Exactly. It's cockroaches. That stuff is gross. Where's that stuff coming from? It's from an aerosol spray can, Nolik. <laughs> aerosol is made of tiny little drops and particles that can hang in the air for quite a long time. Dust, smoke, and fog, they are all aerosols. People learned to make aerosols long ago. For instance, they took a liquid that repels mosquitoes, poured it into a can, and injected some gas into it. Then, when you push the button, the gas forces the liquid to go out through a tiny hole, turning it into a bug spray. That spray will poison the fixies. We have got to stop Elisa. Let's destroy the aerosol can. And what if we switch it with a can of whipped cream? Quit joking. We've got to get Elisa to believe that it's a spider and not cockroaches. She thinks spiders are cute. You're right. Let's go get Buggy. Spray cans have all sorts of different uses. For example, they're very convenient for getting medicine into a sore throat. They can be used to fill the air with the sweet smell of perfume or to cover unpleasant smells with deodorant. Spraying paint from a can is also very useful. It applies the paint very evenly. Some spray cans are even used for food. But there can also be deadly poisons inside of spray cans, like bug killer. So make sure you know which one you're using. And you must always remember how to handle spray cans properly so that nobody gets hurt. You must never open, take apart, or pierce a spray can. And spray cans should never be heated or put next to an open fire, because they contain gas that can explode. Hey, where are you going? Bo 
Doggy, we need your help. Hang on. Buggy, don't be scared. We're your friends, right? Would you help us, please? <gasps> there are new tracks here. Well, Roaches, prepare to die. Are you ready? Go ahead. Run! <gasps> oh, don't kill Buggy. No! <gasps> you are so cute! What a sweet little spider. Can I be your friend? That worked great! I hope that's the end of her spraying that poison. My little spider, I almost poisoned you. Spider, where are you going? Aren't we friends? Yeah, that's a good idea. You're better off being our friend. Buggy, wait! She's upset. She could have been poisoned and we didn't tell her. I'm sure she'll forgive us if we don't apologize. The pencil. Well done, Tom Thomas. Your mom's birthday's today and you're still sleeping. Hey, what's that? It's a drawing, a portrait of his mom. In my opinion, this mom doesn't look very much like Tom Thomas's mom. Maybe he didn't get to finish the picture yet. He was tired and passed out. This is not good. We gotta do something. Ah, we can help him. The pencil's right here. A pencil has a lead inside. It's the lead that makes the drawing. Only lead doesn't grow on trees. It's made out of a mineral called graphite that's mined out of the Earth's crust. But how does the lead get inside a pencil? It's simple. Pencils are made with rods of lead and two wooden boards. Grooves are cut into the boards and the lead's placed in them. The halves are glued together and cut into pencils. The artist's tool is ready. This isn't going to work. Oh, give me a place to stand, and I shall move the pencil through the air. Try and get it closer to the drawing. You gotta lift it up a little. You gotta push it harder. No, like, we're blockheads. Look, there's a pencil sharpener. A piece of lead. That's all we need. All right. Let's check out how it was done by the old scores. By the great masters, like us. Yeah, she could use a little more hair. And a hat, too. And a bow around her neck. Beautiful. And your sock has got to be in there. Yeah, let's keep drawing. Tom Thomas, are you still sleeping? Fixies? No need to thank us. Uh, where is my drawing? What have you done to it? <gasps> if Mom sees this piece of art you created, she'll go and faint. I know it. From happiness, right? Fright's more like it. Does that look like my mom? Uh, well then, give it to your dad. Your dad won't faint. I know it. But it's my mom's birthday, not my dad's. You gotta be kidding me. There's also a famous painting like that. It's called the Black Square. It's a classic. You don't think she'll like it? People want to remember the highlights of their lives. And so they take photos of nature, of their families, of themselves, even of the food they eat. People have been doing this even before the invention of photography, by drawing. An artist might draw the sun, a river, some apple trees, and soon he's made a landscape. And if the apples aren't on trees, but on a plate next to a vase, cup, or basket, then a still life is what it's called. 
If a person's in the center, then it's called a portrait. And when artists make pictures of themselves, it's called a self-portrait. Of course, it's easier for us to take a quick photo of things we pass along the way. But just like the old masters, we put a piece of our souls into our drawings. And if you draw more often, you'll see it for yourself. I promise you that. Maybe you could just give her one of your older drawings. Maybe you should just erase the mess you made of this one. That could work. Erasing's gotta be easier than drawing. Whatever. There's no way you can make it worse. Ugh. Hey, I think I know a way you can fix it. You can use the eraser for drawing. A portrait. Uh, portraits don't seem to work out too well for us. But a still life drawing is a piece of cake. Super! Uh-huh. Pretty good, right? Tom Thomas! Everything's on the table for breakfast. Mom, happy birthday. I drew this present for you. Thank you, Tom Thomas. What a lovely still life, so unusual. I tried really hard. We'll hang it up on the wall. Now, let's go eat. What would Tom Thomas have done without us? Yeah. Whenever you get into a jam, your real friends will always show up to rescue you. The refrigerator. Good job. My homework is all done. piece of gum. It's my bubble gum. Oh, thanks a lot, Tom Thomas. Now, what's the plan to get me unstuck from here? Here's what we do. It's got to be frozen. Once I sat on gum, too, and my mom put my pants in the freezer. The gum froze up, and it came right off. I don't want to go into the freezer. Don't worry, Nolik. I'll stay right here with you. Just hold on. It won't take long at all. Huh. Why do I need to hold on? The gum's already holding on to me. Simka, do you know why it's so cold in the freezer when outside it's warm? I'll explain it to you. A refrigerator has a pump that pushes a special liquid through a long tube. Inside the refrigerator, the liquid in the tube wants to turn into a gas. To do that, it takes the heat from everything inside, and that makes the refrigerator cool. Then the pump sucks in the gas and pushes it out as a hot liquid into the tubes on the back of the refrigerator. That lets all of the heat collected from the inside escape into the air outside. Uh, I wish I was somewhere warm. Hold on. I'll go get us some warm clothes to wear. I don't want to hold on. I want to go with you. Just hang in there. I'm hanging. Tom Thomas, open up! Marcia, do we have any warm clothing to wear? Why in the world do you need it? I just do. Well, I need to know what is happening. Is constantly surrounded by all sorts of danger. 
Inside a dark freezer, a Freaksy can lose his way and freeze to death. If he's not paying attention, he can drown inside of a washing machine or inside of a dishwasher. And a careless Fixie is always at risk of getting an electric shock. Or suppose there's a short circuit inside of an appliance that starts a fire. If this happens, you need to run away if you want to survive. And what about humans? Well, they don't even believe that we Fixies exist at all, so they can accidentally drop something on top of a Fixie, or step on one, or kick us across the room. So if we don't get out of the way in time, ah! Oh! So what I'm saying, Fixies, you need to be careful out there and pay attention. So be smart and stay safe, fellow Fixies. I don't understand this at all. He was right here. Poor Nolik. I wonder where he went. Look at this! Footprints! Nolik! You're alive! You scared me half to death! How did you get out of there? Well, you told me about how a refrigerator works. And so I found that cold tube and started crawling on it until it got hot, and then I was here! Hey, there's smoke coming out of you. We need to cool you down right away! Huh? Where? <laughs> Look how it froze. I could break my teeth on it. You aren't gonna chew it anymore. I'd never do that, not after Nolik sat on it. Well, you didn't need to stick it where it doesn't belong. Hey, I apologize. I'll go and throw it away. Maybe you'll try the trash can? The elevator. Papus, <laughs> Masia, we gotta hurry. How come? Tom Thomas is going to see the circus. Ugh. And what? We want to go with them, can we? The answer is no. Just you kids without supervision. Who said no supervision? His parents are taking him there. Well, be careful. Don't worry. They won't even notice us. Hmm. Well, if Tom Thomas's parents will be there... Hooray! We can go! Wait a second. I didn't even say yes yet. Yeah. Simka Nolik, where are you? We gotta hurry up. Tom Thomas, it's time to go. I'll be right there. We're ready. Climb into my hood. Ha! Huh, I know who's going to the circus today. Whoa! Huh? What just happened? I think that the elevator broke down. Don't you worry. Mm -hmm. Emergency operator. <clears throat> um, uh, we got stuck in the elevator. Understood. Please wait. We'll have the elevator fixed within the hour. That long? That means we won't get to the circus on time. Tom Thomas, we'll go get Papus and Masia. I'm sure they can fix it. People need elevators to help them get to the upper floors of tall buildings. When someone steps into an elevator and presses a button, the elevator's electrical engine starts up. It pulls the cable that is attached to the elevator cabin, and the elevator goes to the desired floor. The cable hangs over a wheel, and it usually has a heavy counterbalancing weight attached to the other end of it. This counterweight balances the elevator and helps the electric motor do its job. Hmm, I wonder what the reason is. I think I see something over there that got stuck. Looks like you found the reason. We gotta go and fix it now, or we'll never get to the circus on time. You know, we can just have it right here. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the Fixie Spectacular. And now your attention, please, on the high wire. Our very own aerial gymnasts! Tidish! 
Our next act, feats of strength. <gasps> 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 to fix it with a death-defying circus act. Point your eyes up! Marcia, where are you going? Up to the electric motor! Do you know the right way to behave yourself inside of an elevator? First of all, small children should never get into an elevator by themselves. They should only go in with their parents or other adults they know well. When getting on to an elevator, the adult should always enter first and then the child. When it's time to get out, it's the other way around. First the child leaves and then the adult. If you are taking a dog onto an elevator, make sure its tail and leash are completely inside so they don't get stuck in the door. And there's one more thing. If the elevator suddenly stops for some unknown reason, don't try to break out of it yourself. Press the button that calls the emergency operator and wait for help from the elevator repairmen. Or the fixies. I reached the motor! Turn it on! Oh, they fixed it. That was quick. Now we'll make it on time. There was no need to worry. Stop! Ugh. It's way too high. Tom Thomas went to the circus without us. There's no need to get that upset, Nolik. Our circus is as good as theirs. Right, Papus? Of course it is. Thank you. Thank you, uh, to who? What do you mean, who? The elevator repairman. The traffic light. Red. <laughs> Yellow. Green. All right, let's go. Tom Thomas, why did we stop? There's a crosswalk. When there are lines like that, you have to let pedestrians cross. Go on. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good trip. Why do we stop now? There's no crosswalk. But that's a crossing gate fire. You have to let the train pass. Nolik, come on down. Check out this traffic light. It's new. Is that a real traffic light? Wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. It looks awesome. Nolik, where are you going? Stop! Today. Now look at it. Uh, you were supposed to let me cross. You ran into the street when the light was red. A traffic light is a street lamp that sends multicolored signals to vehicles and pedestrians so they don't get in each other's way when they're on the road. When the light is red, it means stop. You must stay where you are. A yellow light tells drivers, caution, prepare to stop. You are only allowed to start crossing the street after the traffic light changes to the color green. And even then, it's important to remember, look both ways before crossing. Got it? You can only cross on green, Nolik. Even really little kids know that. But the light was green. No, it was red. No, green. It, it was, was red. red. It was green, I swear! Maybe you're colorblind or something. Yeah, possibly. Uh, what does it mean if you're colorblind? It means you can't tell colors apart. So you don't know which one's red and which one's green. Uh, that's what I am. Right! <laughs> you never mixed up colors before this. Okay. What color is that nightstand over there? Uh, it's red. And the plane up there? Oh, that's green. How about me, huh? What color am I? Green is blue is brown is gray. With both dots. I'm what? It's true. He's colorblind. Poor kid. Told ya. Wasn't my fault. All right. We'll sort it out at home. And what are we gonna do with the traffic light? We can fix it. And we'll fix your car, too. All right. What color's the car? 
Purple? If you say so. We got work to do, so take a seat before you mix something else up. The road can be a dangerous place. There are so many cars and pedestrians on it, and all of them are in a rush to get where they're going. But be careful. Even if a driver notices a pedestrian on the road and brakes, it can still take quite some distance before the car comes to a complete stop. To avoid disaster, have respect for one another. If you need to cross the street, go to the nearest traffic light, crosswalk, or sign with a pedestrian on it. While you're still on the sidewalk, look to your left and then to your right and see how far away any cars, motorcycles, or bicycles are. If they're close, then just stay where you are. If the driver is responsible and polite, he will stop for you if he sees you from a distance. If you want to make yourself more visible when it's dark, attach safety reflectors to your clothes, and then it will be safe for everyone on the road. All fixed. Tom Thomas tested out. Turning the lights on. So, is it right? Yeah. Take your places. All right, let's cross. Ready, set, go! The game is up. You aren't colorblind, Nolik. You know what you are? You're a feigner. Me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I got a little of it right in here. And once in a while, it goes up here. Uh, what's a feigner, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> the lie detector. Suka! Shh, quiet. I'm on a stakeout here. Who are you staking out? Huh? Tom Thomas. We've got a bet that he won't be able to survive three days without any TV. Really? Can I be on the stakeout with you? Shh. Simka! Ha! Aha! I got you! What? You lost the bet, Tom Thomas. Just tell me you didn't. I didn't. Why didn't you? It's because I... Mm, I'm not Tom Thomas. What? I'm Tom's brother. That's totally not true. We know Tom Thomas doesn't have a brother. I meant his first cousin. Then how come you two look so much alike? It's because our mothers are twins. So what should we call you? Who, me? Uh, John Johnson. And who are you, by the way? As if you don't know who we are. This room is beautiful. Sure is bigger than mine. I don't believe you. You're telling a lie. And what is your proof? Maybe he's not lying. There's a way to check it. How? Yeah, how? With a lie detector. You'll see. A lie detector is a device that is used to help figure out if someone is telling the truth or if they are lying. You see, when someone is lying, they always get a little bit nervous. Even though we might not see it, we know that a liar's heart beats a little faster, his breathing changes, and he sweats. A lie detector can pick up on all of these little things. And that's how a lie detector can be used to help find the truth. But you don't have a lie detector. But we know how a lie detector works, don't we? Or are you scared, Tom Thomas? What's that for? To listen to your pulse. How come? So I'll be able to check how fast your heart is beating. And Nolik? He's gonna keep an eye on how often you blink. And what are you doing with the egg? The egg is an old African method. If you're not telling the truth, your hand will automatically squeeze the egg. And so, the egg will crack. Well, my egg won't crack. We'll see about that. Human 
humans have tried to come up with all sorts of ways to find out the truth. For instance, in ancient China, they would put some dry rice in a person's mouth when they told him the crime they believed he committed. Then they checked the rice. If the rice stayed dry, they believed he had committed the crime. In ancient India, a person had to bang on a gong while answering a judge's questions. If he started banging the gong louder, then it was believed that he was trying to hide the truth. And in Europe, if one knight accused another of lying, then they would just take part in a duel. Whoever won that one was said to be on the side of truth. No, it's not easy to hide the truth, but sometimes it can be even harder to find it. Answer yes or no. You got that? Do you have two ears? Don't you have eyes? Just yes or no. Yes. Answer, are you a girl? Hey, come on. Yes or no? No. Where do you find such dumb questions? We just have to check what happens to your heart when you tell the truth to us. All right, now answer this. Do you know the Fixies? Yes or no? Yes. Uh, no. I forgot. His pulse is speeding up. Are you Tom Thomas? No. Ah, uh, his pulse is racing. And his eyes have started blinking. And the Fixies, tell us where you learned about him. From Tom Thomas. He couldn't have told you about us. It's a secret. You could. Not true. It's true. It's not true. Yes, it is. Hey, look! The egg cracked! Just give up, John Johnson. All right, I'm Tom Thomas, guys. Tish! Is it really possible to know if you lied just by measuring your pulse? With pulse, you really can. But you probably couldn't with the egg. You tricked me then. That wasn't nice. You weren't tricked. John Johnson was. Huh, you know what? I think you've got to get checked out on this lie detector. Ha! I don't think so. You need to get ready to give me my wish. Because you're the one that lost the bet. The flashlight. Where is that thing? Hi, Tom Thomas. What are you looking for? The flashlight. Ah, here it is. Why do you need it? Katya, I want to talk with her. Why not use the phone? This thing's a flashlight. It's not a telephone. No, you don't understand. Me and Katya came up with a secret code. If I flash just once, then it means, hello there. Oh, and Katya's also said hello there to you. And two flashes? What's that? Katya's asking if everything's all right. Now I'll tell her that everything's good. Oh, what's wrong with this? I think it's not working right. I see, Nolik, but what's wrong? Any flashlight is nothing more than a battery and a light bulb connected by some wires that are used to make a switch in between them. To turn on a flashlight, you flip on a switch. That lets the electricity flow through the wires from the battery to the bulb so it lights up. And if it won't light up, that means that the battery is dead, the light bulb is burned out, or the switch is broken. And now, let's put all this theory into practice. I'm sorry, but I don't have time right now. Don't you get it? If I don't signal back, she'll think that I don't want to talk to her. And that would just be terrible. Just don't get all worked up. We'll help you. But first, we need to get the Mac uh, 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 um, the pack -a -mac, and come right back. See ya. Did you hear that? Masya, what a weird sound. Uh-huh. That's new. <laughs> now we know what the noise was. <sighs> Papus, can we use a pack a mat to fix a flashlight? Really, did you say a flashlight? <laughs> Do you know the story about when Granddad had to travel for miles on top of a dog? It's true! He was sent on a very important mission. A huge flashlight repair. What kind was it? A special kind called a lighthouse. <laughs> A lighthouse is a tall structure with a huge flashlight on top of it that is used to help ships and planes find their way. People have been using lighthouses since ancient times. The most famous of them all is the Lighthouse of Alexandria. It was built in Egypt more than 2,000 years ago, and it was more than 100 meters tall. The ancient Greeks considered this lighthouse one of the seven wonders of the world. In ancient times, people would burn big fires on top of lighthouses. 
Today, the light comes from powerful electric bulbs. Many of today's lighthouses not only give off light, but they send radio signals, too. Yes, thanks to lighthouses, ships and planes for miles around learn where they need to sail or where they've got to fly in order to stay safe. And thanks to that heroic deed of your grandfather, that big old lighthouse started working. Since then, not a single ship has ever gone astray. Simka! And what if we don't just fix the flashlight, but we do something heroic? Like Grandpus did. Uh-huh. All right, what do you say? Let's jump on the back of this dog and get moving. Stop ducking. Grab hold of my hand. Uh-oh. Chusaka, no! Get out, right now! <sighs> Tanish! <laughs> that was really some heroic deed! Now it's time to go get that lighthouse fixed. Tom Thomas, hand the lighthouse over. What kind of lighthouse? The one that's your flashlight. Uh, I have no use for it. What do you mean, no use for it? But then how are you gonna tell Katya what she needs to know? I already told her. Watch this. No, that wasn't the deal. Yeah. You want to tell us our heroic deed was in vain? Well, if you need some heroic deed, then sure, fix it. Hooray! Hooray! Vitamins. Seven times five is 35. Seven times six, um, uh, wait a sec. Uh, it's, uh... Tom Thomas, are you ready? For what? For our walk. Did you forget? Oh. Yeah, I'm having such problems with my memory. I keep trying to memorize this table, but I can't. <laughs> if you want to improve your memory, you need vitamins. Vitamins? Well, how's it going, Tom Thomas? Not well. My memory's just terrible. Studying's getting me nowhere. Hey, don't be discouraged. We'll make your memory better with some vitamins. Oh, now you about vitamins. Uh, and who else? Just a school friend. Well, all right. Vitamins are very important for people's health, even though you don't need much of them. For instance, vitamin A is necessary for good eyesight and normal growth. Vitamin C helps keep you from getting sick. Vitamin D makes your teeth and bones stronger. Usually, people get the vitamins they require from a diet of fruits, dairy, vegetables, and other healthy foods. But if someone still isn't getting the vitamins their body needs, then doctors recommend taking special vitamin pills. All right, take out some vegetables and some fruit. And some berries. They have a lot of vitamins, too. Forget about it. We're strengthening your memory with vitamins. And you'll study the multiplication table at the same time. All right, then. There are three cherries in each pile. Tom Thomas eats five piles. Go on, eat, eat. So, here's the question. How many cherries did Tom Thomas eat all together? I don't know. What'd you say? I said I don't know. Try counting those pits, then. Huh. Fifteen. That's right. And that means that three times five equals fifteen. Now, try my problem. Tom Thomas ate three pairs of apples. That's easy. The answer's six. I just couldn't find more apples for that one. Tom Thomas quit slacking off. To get this problem right, you have to eat the apples. 
They have vitamins. We don't have enough carrots for me to learn how to multiply by nine. All right, then. I'll help you. <laughs> to multiply two by three, all you need to do is just add three twos together. It's much harder to multiply a number by nine. That takes too much time to add. That's why at schools they want you to memorize the table. But there's a simple way to multiply by nine without the table or a calculator. Let's say you need to multiply the number three by nine. Put your hands face up in front of you. Now, find the third finger from the left and bend it down. So what do we see? There are two fingers to the left of the bent finger and seven fingers to the right. Two and seven means that the answer is 27. You got it? Great! Let's do another problem. What is seven times nine? Here are six fingers and here are three. That's right! The answer is 63. <laughs> Thomas, did you eat all of that? But you're the one that told me you need to eat vitamins. That's why I got these vitamins for you. That little? What do you mean, little? There's enough in this bottle for a month. Go ahead, try one. They're very good for you. They taste good, too. <laughs> right. Better than an onion. <laughs> or a radish. <laughs> Can I have another one? No, that's enough. You shouldn't take more than one vitamin every day. I remember where I saw this. I saw the same kind of bottle with a green lid over at Katya's. Speaking of memory, let's check your multiplication table. Let's say that you and Katya are each taking one vitamin a day. So, how many have you eaten after nine days? The answer is 18. <laughs> well done. It's getting better. Vitamins really work. The Magic Wand. Oh, Tom Thomas, how did you get here? It was a piece of cake. I just got this cool magic wand as a gift, see? Wow! There's no such thing as a magic wand. I don't believe you. You just wait. Any wish is the wand's command. Check it out. Today I want my school to be closed. Golden wish, Tadish! Tom Thomas, your teacher from school just gave me a call. She said your school has totally disappeared. How odd. So I'm not going to school? Well, how? Instead of school, we'll go to the park. Hooray! Real magic. Ah, oh, it's so great. No, there's no magic. They're only illusions. I don't know what illusions are. It's when what we think we're seeing is not what is actually happening. <laughs> Have you ever seen a magician pull a rabbit out of an empty hat? Do you think it's magic? No, it is only an illusion. In reality, the rabbit's hidden inside the table that the magician puts his hat on. The lid of the hat is made with a secret hatch. And when the magician puts his arm inside the hat, he grabs the rabbit from the table below and ta-da! How every magic trick works may be a secret, but every illusion does have an explanation. I'm telling you, this wand's totally magical. Right now, I can make a rabbit appear out of this trash can for you. Golden wish, Tadish! Oh, that wasn't the idea. Looks like a dog to me. Wait, one more time. Golden wish, Tadish! Hmm. Golden wish, Tadish! Thomas, will you cut it out? One Chusaka was already enough for us, and now there's three. Ah, ah! 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 Hey, 
Tom Thomas, please tell your rabbits that they can stop barking so loudly. Ah! Ah! Shame on you for attacking helpless little kids. Wait, I'll make you bigger now. Golden, wish, Tadish. little kids around? Wow, I'm huge! I'm as huge as Tom Thomas. I'm huge! Oh, no, like, be careful! Ah! Ah! Uh. How can you live being this tall? It's so inconvenient. And I thought it was tough when you were so tiny. Tom Thomas, are you ready? Hey, why do we have three dogs all of a sudden? Oh, my word. I was dreaming that someone had given me a magic wand. And then I had to make it big, see? And, and, and my mom saw you. That's awful. That would have made me scream. I wish I had a magic wand of my very own. We Fixies aren't ones to believe in magic, but we do believe in what humans can do, because humans often work wonders. For ages, flying in the sky seemed to be an impossible dream. But today, anyone can take off to the sky in an airplane. It used to be that humans thought that only magic could take them to the moon. But now astronauts have already walked on its surface. In fairy tales, people were able to see and talk to each other through a magic mirror. But today, we have the internet and telephones we can use. Refrigerators, televisions, automobiles, computers. There are so many things that humans have created. Wondrous things that they used to only be able to dream about. Like a miracle from a fairy tale. A magic wand? Why do you need it? First, I'd skip school today. Tom Thomas, are you ready? I told you, we're going to the park. And what about school? I'll skip it? Hmm. <laughs> Good joke. Could this be a dream, too? No, it's just that today is Sunday, and that's the magic of it. <laughs> the Draftsman. Pew! Ha! Huh? What? Hi there, Tom Thomas. What are you drawing? I'm not drawing. This is called drafting. What's the difference? Tell me, is that a circle? Sure is. And that? It's a circle, too. Only, it's a rounder one. Of course. That's because I drafted it with a compass. And now I've got a real target. So now I'll load my dart gun. Why'd you shoot that thing at me? It was the gun. I didn't even pull the trigger. What? Did it break? Hmm. Let's open it up and see. There. This little part broke. Let me go find Papoose. He can help you. He can make another one. A brand new one. <laughs> Oof. Wait. I can draft a technical drawing. Will Papoose understand how to read one of those? Are you kidding? Papoose is an expert at everything. Done. Wow, Tom Thomas, you're a real technical drawer. A draftsman, Nolik. That's what they call it. Try drawing a perfect circle by hand. Can't do it, huh? Well, with the help of a drafting compass, your circle will turn out great. Just put the needle point in the center and turn the compass, and it's done. A compass is only one of the many different tools for drafting. For example, if you need to draw a straight line, use a ruler. And if you need to draft a frame for your picture, you can use a triangle. First draft one side, and then the other. And then to finish your frame, just turn the triangle upside down and draft the two remaining sides. You'll get a perfectly squared frame. There are also drafting instruments for making curved lines. 
They are called irregular curves, or French curves. But actually, now people use computers more and more for drafting technical drawings. Baboos! Huh? Ooh. Ooh. What? What happened? We really need your help. One of the parts broke in Tom Thomas's dart gun. Could you make it? What kind of part exactly? Look, here's a technical drawing. So, you even got a technical drawing. Very good, then. Let's take a look at it. <laughs> Here you go. Super. Let's see. Hmm. It's not gonna work. You see? It sticks out here on the side. I need to draft another technical drawing. Papus! Huh? Ah! <laughs> Nolik, you scared me again. Forgive me. But the part has to stick out over on this side. Uh, 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 and you're sure that's all? That's all, for real. Tom Thomas, it's done. <sighs> Listen, while you were gone, I realized that the part needs to have a hole right here. Papus? <laughs> Again? Uh, sorry about this, but there's a hole in this thing, too. A technical drawing is a special kind of drawing. It has to precisely describe the thing that needs to be made. To do that, the drawing must be very accurately drafted and include all of the measurements. And that's not all. If the object is complex, it must be drafted from at least three sides, including the front, the side, and the top. You see? The object looks different from every side. So if you don't want to work over and over again, learn to draft correctly. And boom! It works! Bullseye! And all thanks to our technical drawings. <laughs> yeah! After three tries, right? Some draftsman you are. <laughs> now I can draft all sorts of technical drawings. Even one of you, if you'd like. Uh, no, don't bother. Hey, Great. that tickles! Now do me a favor and turn. Hey, what are you doing there? Mm -hmm. Just stop. What's going on? Now I think I got it. It's done. And what's that circle for, huh? That's the top view. You know what, Simka? That's what you really look like from up here. Nolik, take this over to Papus. He can use it to make another Simka. No thanks, Tom Thomas. For me, one Simka's enough. The Rock. Tom Thomas is back! Hooray! So, how was your camping trip? Super! You've got to check out what I found. Rocks? That's just half of it. Wow! Is that a screw? It looks kind of strange. Because it got petrified millions of years ago. <laughs> Screws weren't around then. They came much later. And how do we know that? It could be the first one discovered. And maybe it's not just some screw. Know what I'm saying? Are you saying that we might be looking at... A Fixie! Fixies believe that their ancestors came into being not that long ago, right when humans started inventing complicated devices. But what if that's not true? Maybe millions of years ago, before the dinosaurs, there were a different kind of fixies that inhabited the Earth. And maybe there were people then, too. And fixies weren't hiding from them. They were friends who they helped with everything. Together, they used to create inventions, construct buildings, and make scientific discoveries. But then there was some horrible catastrophe, and this whole civilization disappeared. And what if someday scientists find traces of that civilization? Then ancient fixies will be discovered as well! That would be so cool! <laughs> My imagination ran away with me. You're right! He could be our great-great-grandpoosh! Or our great-great-grandmas. Do you think maybe we could bring it back to life? We could screw it in somewhere. You get energy from electricity, right? What an idea! But what if our great great gets super scared because everything is different? We can build him a prehistoric world to wake up to! Time to 
to bring him back to life. And you, Tom Thomas, disguise yourself. We'll break him like this. We need a different way to do it. We need more power for this. <laughs> there wasn't any electricity back then. That's why shocking him won't work. <laughs> oh, our great, great ancestor, who came to us from an ancient home, be released from this stone. Be free! Why is it always so difficult with relatives? Wake up! Wake up! And what if... We've tried everything. This is just a waste of time. Oh, uh, let's sing that song about the screw. Our song. No, Lick, it's never gonna work. You don't know that. We can at least give it a try. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without them with no little screws in there. Look, it's moving! It's impossible! It really did! If, if you, you think, think a screw is nothing, nothing take it out, but just beware. Tom Thomas, hey! Well, how was your camping trip? Uh... Seems to me quite a success. Yeah? So, let's see what you found there. Do you know what this is? Well, it's a rock. It isn't. It's the stalk of a sea lily. You mean a flower? An animal who lives at the bottom of the sea. Its stalk makes it look like a flower, like a lily. On planet Earth, there are lots of rocks. Some of them are hiding deep below the surface, and others appear with volcanic lava. Remember those fairy tales where an evil witch would turn everything living into stone? Well, it's really happened, just without any magic. Some prehistoric plants and animals were petrified way back when, and they've remained that way ever since. Thanks to them, we can get an idea about what life was like on Earth millions of years ago. And this one's a devil's finger, the squid's ancestor. How do you know all this stuff? When I was your age, I collected fossils and rocks. Let's go. I'll show you my collection. Do you think any of our ancestors were sea lilies? Uh-uh. Shame. Why did I let myself get so carried away? There weren't any ancient fixies in the world. <sighs> but I... I still believe in them. They just haven't found the right rock yet. But they'll find it. I know they will. The Mirror. Tom Thomas, why has this mirror been standing here in the hallway for a whole week already? My dad can't seem to find any time to hang it on the wall. Are you sure it won't fall? It hasn't fallen so far. <laughs> so, Nolik, do I look like Spider-Man? <laughs> ah! <laughs> no, you don't look like him at all. Yeah! You can't climb on walls like Spider-Man. Yeah, I'm sure you can do it. I can do it. Just give your chewing gum to me. See that? Like in the movie. Oh, like that's really hard. Just keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> your eyes and see what the only spider fixie in the whole wide world can do. could see their reflection was to look into water. The very first mirrors appeared about 5,000 years ago. 
they were made out of silver or bronze. Legend has it that the Greek scientist Archimedes once burned down an entire enemy fleet with the help of mirrors like these. But humans only became able to see their reflections well after they started making mirrors out of glass. And we still use glass mirrors today. But of course, mirrors are not only used for looking at our reflections. They are also used in telescopes to collect the light of distant stars. And humans also use mirrors inside of automobile headlights so they will shine even brighter. Just look at all the things mirrors can do for you. Whew. Looks like it didn't break. Help me lift it so we can lean it back up on the wall. I've gotten a reflection in the mirror. That's impossible, because only vampires can't see their reflections. Or ghosts. But I'm not in there. So then, I guess you've become a ghost. <laughs> no, not a ghost. I don't like them. Hey, what's all the racket? Did you guys get yourself into trouble again? Suka, me and Tom Thomas were playing Spider-Man. And I, I turned into a ghost for some reason. Yeah, ghost. <laughs> That's silly. They don't even exist. Oh, you don't have any reflection either. Simka, you're a ghost just like I am. <gasps> That's just goofy. Look, just look, here I am. Well, hi there. But why couldn't I see myself over here? It's probably because the mirror is scratched on the back. Tom Thomas, do you think you can rotate the mirror? It's just like I said. Some of the special coating got scraped off of the back. A mirror is not just a piece of plain glass. Plain glass lets light pass through it. But a mirror reflects light. To turn a piece of glass into a mirror, people spray a special shiny coating on one of its sides that reflects everything. And then to protect the shiny coating, an extra layer of paint is put on top of it. But even with that protection, you still have to handle mirrors carefully. Because mirrors can easily scratch or even break. And do you think that this one is possible to fix? Yeah, we can do it. It's a good thing you have a pack of mat with you. I thought we might need it after you started screaming over here. Don't tell me you've got paint in there for a mirror. A pack of mats got everything you'll ever need. It's all ready. <gasps> My dad's coming. Tom Thomas. What are you doing here? Checking if you hung it. Yeah, right. I'll definitely hang that mirror on the wall soon. Hmm, like tomorrow. Or next week. Water. Hi, I'm all ready. Nolik, he's going to stay home like we agreed. Uh-huh, see you soon. Who's that? Nolik, it's you. I, I got to go. I'll go with you. No, we've got... We've got an important job. Little kids aren't allowed. Why can't I help you? Because this work is very demanding. Only it's boring. And you're impatient, so you'll bother us. Huh? But I am patientist. Patient, son? I mean, patient. Like, totally patient. Prove it, then. How? See that, uh, water filter. You have to count how many glasses of water it cleans. How many do I need to count? If you can reach a hundred, I'll believe you're patient. Why do they need that filter? Why don't you drink water out of the sink? Don't worry about it. You need to be counting. That was one. Without water, life is not possible. The human body is made up of two-thirds water, and people need to drink it all the time, but only when it's clean water. Water is transported from rivers and lakes into houses through pipes. Along the way, it gets cleaned of debris and dirt. But even so, this water might still contain toxic substances or harmful microbes. That's why people use filters to clean water for drinking. No bad stuff can get through this last line of defense. Huh, huh. Tom Thomas! 
want water. But you gotta. Don't you know that your body is almost all water? And so? And so what if you run out of it? Then all that'll be left of you is just some skin and bones. Oh, that's what my mom is always saying, that I'm skin and bones. There you go. That's why you need to drink water. Drink some more. And some more. Come on, come on. That's all. I ran out of room. You have to have plenty of room left. Why do you care about how much water I'm drinking? Because I gotta count how much water is going through the filter. I really gotta. Yeah, and what? It's gotta go through me for you to count it? I'm totally full. What am I supposed to do? I've been waiting here in the kitchen all day, but nobody's drinking. What's going on? <gasps> the filter is broken. You gotta call Simka right away. 415, 416, 417, 418, 419. Simka, it's an emergency. What? The filter's burning. <laughs> You're really funny, Nola. Simka, he's not choking. Something's going on over there. We gotta hurry. Where's the emergency? Look! So, what's going on here? Great. Now we're stuck fixing the filter. It's not broken. The flashing red light is an indicator. It means it's time to replace the cartridge in the filter. Since ancient times, people have been coming up with ways to remember things or to not mix things up. Knots on ropes were used as reminders that it was time to pay back a debt or reap a harvest. People would cut notches into trees to help remember numbers. Later, people invented the abacus, calendars, and day planners. And now, things are even easier because devices can give us reminders. Alarm clocks help people get up on time. A loud oven timer can save a pie from burning. The green light of an indicator shows that a device is turned on and ready to be used. A red light shows the opposite. <laughs> Today, smart appliances can tell their owners what they need to do. Without them, humans can be so absent-minded. Cartridge is enough for another 2,000 glasses. 2,000? And what do I do about this? Whoa. <laughs> All right, Nolik, you've done a good job there. Way to go. Yeah, if you want, I can do it. Tom Thomas, want some water to drink? Uh-uh. I can't drink anymore. And I can't wait anymore either. <laughs> well, looks like his indicator is flashing on now. <laughs> <laughs> The cell phone. Hmm. Hey, Nolik. Come on out and play. He's not allowed. He was punished. Can you tell me what you did? I grabbed a Pac-Man and I forgot to ask. How long do you have to sit there? Until Masi and Papus come home from their boo 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 boozness. What did you say? Business, a work trip. They're inside of your father's cell phone right now. They were busy doing repairs in there when he left the house for work. Do you know the reason why a mobile phone is also called a cell phone? Mobile phones are connected to other mobile phones with the help of special radio stations that are put on top of towers and building roofs. Each one of these stations sends signals to its own area below. And each area is called a cell. A mobile phone works anywhere it can find a nearby station that it can connect to. So as long as there is a station nearby, you can talk as much as you want. You can even move from one cell to another. And without you ever knowing it, your mobile phone will switch from one station to another one. So your conversation can keep on going, even if you're running after a bus or riding on it. Tom Thomas, hello. There you go, my dad came back home already. Hi dad, how are you? Can you believe it? It looks like I lost my phone. 
What do you mean you lost it? Where? I have no idea. So what? I'm gonna have to sit in here forever now? You? Our parents are missing! The phone stopped shaking a while now. We're probably already at home. Uh, uh, not home to me. How can we ever get home to our children? Where's my Masia? Don't whine. We'll work something out. Don't worry. I got a phone. Let's give them a ring. They can't answer your call. But what if they answer us? Call them, Tom Thomas. I... Don't even think it. We're not allowed to talk to humans. We're not going to talk to them. We're just going to listen. We need to close the contacts. It's no use. Oh, they answered the phone. Let me talk. Papus, Masia, it's me, Simka. Simka? Yeah, Masia, where are you? In the telephone. The phone part is not what she's asking you. <laughs> oh, it smells a lot like gasoline in here. Ask your father, was he anywhere around gasoline? Dad. Dad, did you go anywhere today where it smells like gasoline? Gasoline? Uh, I had to go to the gas station. That's the place where your telephone disappeared. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, I've got... Intuition. Intuition? Intuition, huh? You know what? I'll go check. Come and check out our fixie ringtone. Telephone is... It's just incredible. You see? I found it. Son, you're one clairvoyant. I didn't notice when it fell out of my pocket back at the gas station. My children! Oh, my Masia! Papus! Oh, my sweeties! <laughs> so, uh, just by any chance, you think you might happen to know where I can find that nice watch I lost? No. Don't worry, there's no rush. Just use that intuition you've got. Uh? <laughs> Hockey. Today I'm definitely gonna beat you. You already forgot? You're just one and we're a team, baby. Just you wait. <laughs> one nothing. Um, Katya? Uh, hi, what are you doing here? Katya came to pick up something for her mom. I need a little more time. Can you wait here? Yes, of course, I'd be happy to. We can play a game. Hmm, only just not hockey. I never understood why boys are so crazy about it. I'm baffled by it, too. Oh, the Fixies are here. Hi, guys. Hi, hi there. Even though you clearly don't get hockey, I'm sorry, we're finishing this game. And after that, my dad and I are going to go and see a real hockey game at the arena. I'm sure that a real game is just as boring. You're wrong! Hockey is an incredibly interesting game, but it isn't easy. A player needs so many different skills, like skating very fast, stopping quickly, dodging the opposing players, controlling his stick, and shooting the puck into the goal. And there's no way to do all of that without science. For instance, to calculate how hard to hit the puck or how quickly to stop. Hockey players learn all about that during their practices. They put on their protective gear and go for it. And that's not all. 
hockey players also have to be brave and nimble. Otherwise, they might find themselves unable to stop and crashing into the boards or taking a puck to the head. Ow! But as the saying goes, hockey is not for cowards. Tidish! Sorry. Bounce it off the board! Enough with that! I happen to be helping you, if you didn't notice. You said you don't like hockey, so quit giving me advice. Hmm, whatever. That was my second goal from that spot over there. You lucked out. Uh-huh, sure did. He'll have less luck if you keep this player back. And that one needs to pass off the boards. Get your goal. Before she said that. she didn't know anything exactly. about hockey. So are we playing or not? Attack and check, don't lose control. A line change on the fly. The puck is zooming towards the goal to score and break the tie. It's one for all and all for one. Great teamwork is a must. Let's go and show them how it's done. This game was made for us. Hockey's our game. hadn't been for Katya. But the winning goal was mine. Tom Thomas, it's time for the game. Ready to get going? Katya, I'll take you home. Oh, um, could I go with you to see the hockey? I never realized it's such a great game. Hey, you know what? Why don't we go to the game together? Maybe I'll like it too. Great, it's about time. Let's go. Well, Tom Thomas has his own team now. And not only that, they don't give up. It's not that. It was beginner's luck. That's all that it was. The frying pan. Woohoo! Can you do this? Easy. How about this? And voila! I could be on <clears throat> skates and still do it. If I was on skates, I could jump ten times in a row. Well, I could do a hundred with my Shot. Then let's see them. There's no skating rink. There will be. What will there be? A skating rink. Where? In the frying pan. Uh-oh. All right, my bragging buddies. Go get your skates. Fixies love playing sports. You might find Fixie adults working out with weights, or maybe working on a gymnastics routine. Fixie kids love having Fixie board contests, or taking part in parkour competitions, where they have to run, jump, and hop over all sorts of obstacles. These kinds of competitions usually take place inside of sophisticated appliances. Orienteering is held inside these appliances, too. That's when Fixies use a map to follow a complicated route. And the route is quite exact. You can't make one wrong turn. 
But the Fixie's favorite game has got to be hide-and-seek. Nobody can compete with them in this game. You don't believe me? <laughs> Watch! The rink is frozen. <laughs> so, who's first? Nola, come on! <laughs> well, are you going to jump? <laughs> wow, class! <laughs> and that's all? Not at all. No lick! No lick! No lick! No He's not lick! not gonna make it. Too short a start. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do anymore because I'm injured. Sure. Say no more, Mr. Braggart. Then it's your turn, Simka. Now watch and see how it's done. La 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 Oh, wow. Nolik, you never had a chance. Always. She gets in my way, and now she's gonna win. Nolik, do you really want to beat her? Uh-huh. You see the salt? What? You think we should cook her? Of course not. But if we put some salt on the ice, it'll melt. Simka, didn't you say that you were gonna skate with your eyes closed? Piece of cake! What? Can't do it? Watch and learn. One. And two. Well done. And three. Hey, this is salt. That wasn't fair, guys. You wouldn't have done a hundred jumps anyway. Let's start the contest all over again. But this time we play by the rules. Oh. Look, there's a scratch in the pan. What? What a disaster. You can cook just about anything in a frying pan. Meat, fish, vegetables. In order to stop food from sticking to the pan, modern frying pans are covered with a non-stick coating like Teflon. You can cook in these pans without even using oil. And they're easy to clean. But you have to treat this kind of kitchenware very carefully. It's better not to use metal spatulas or forks that can scratch it. Because you shouldn't cook food in a pan that has scratches on it. It can be really dangerous for your health. Yeah, this pan's completely shot. It's all because of your dumb bet. It's all because someone was cheating. Mom's back. Please, Simka, help me out, will you? I'll give you any wish you want. Or three. No, five. Five? <laughs> I can help you. If you guys jump up and down a hundred times on one leg, we could do two hundred. Tom Thomas, what do you say we make those crepes? Mmm, these crepes are perfect. I just love cooking with this pan. Why are you jumping? I want to make my legs stronger. <laughs> Anyway, you never could have jumped a hundred times in there. Bet on it? Uh-uh. <laughs> the movie. He fakes left. He shoots. <gasps> Class! And can you do it backwards? Yeah, sure. I wish Simka could see this. Why don't we make a movie for Simka about fire? We can use my fixie tub. It's got a camera. How come it's only for Simka? We'll make it for all of us. That's a great idea. I'll shoot the ball at the basket, and Nolik will do the filming. And what do we do? You can be whatever you want, like cheerleaders or the coaches. Yeah, a cheerleader. Help me in. Motion pictures, or movies, appeared more than 100 years ago after the invention of celluloid film. A movie is made up of a series of still photographs called frames. When you look at the frames quickly, one after another, the picture on the screen appears to move. It's hard to believe, but the first viewers got very scared when they saw a moving train on the screen. <laughs> 
At first, films were silent. Only later did people learn to make them with sound. And soon after that, people learned to make movies in full beautiful color. Movies aren't shot on film anymore. They're made with digital cameras. Today, almost all phones and tablets come with digital cameras inside of them. This makes it easy for just about anybody to make their own movie and share it with their friends. Hey, he's the best. Ooh, he can shoot the best. Hey, I haven't turned the camera on yet. Get ready. Here we go. Show me. Yep. Fire is the best. And where's the ball? It flew over there. That's not right. You have to see the ball flying in the picture. I got it. Get ready. Uh. Fire is the best. How was that? It worked. I got it. Fire is the best. And where am I? You're somewhere over there. And we aren't there. Why did you have us cheering? Nolik, you need to make sure we're all in the shot. Okay, I'll try. shots and you do the filming. Fire can't even hit the basket. You try to hit the basket when everybody's bothering you. Oh, so it's our fault, hmm? Why don't you learn how to play? Are you fighting again? <laughs> We're shooting a film. Whoa! Can I see it? There's nothing for you to see. All I have is pieces. And not one is right. Don't worry. It's no problem. All it needs is editing. What does it need? <laughs> Movies are not usually shot all at once, just a piece at a time. And each of these pieces can be shot several times with the camera in different places. Then there's plenty to choose from. After you're done shooting, you can take all of the best shots and put them one after another to make your movie. This process is called editing. Editing allows us to make movies that show things that could be impossible to shoot all at once. Well, let's see. For this first shot, we've got this cake over here. For the ball going in, we've got this one. And I like this one of me shooting. And don't forget to put in me and Tula. Of course not. So here's what we've got. Fire is the best. Oh, geez. The film is super. Can I try to edit it? Yeah, go ahead. Now we have something to show to our teacher. And Digit, too. <laughs> and Papus and Masia. Look, I did my own editing in the movie. What was that? That's not true. It is so. With editing, it's just not fair, Nolik. Fire was able to put it in a hundred times without any editing. You sure didn't. Hey, guys, don't fight. Do you want me to teach you all the right way to shoot hoops? Yeah! All right, here we go. And shoot! Fire is the best! Oh, we can shoot the best! Fasteners. And of course, all of the appliance's parts must be fastened good and tight. What are you doing, colleague? Today, Lisa is returning from her vacation. And so, I decided before she gets back, I'll clean up the laboratory. Quite a noble initiative. Now, where was I? You were saying all parts have to be fastened. <laughs> You're right. And what kinds of fasteners can you name? Fire? Uh, a screw? Mm-hmm. And what else? Uh, another screw? <laughs> that would make... A total of two screws altogether. Simka? To fasten wood or plastic parts together, you can use nails. 
Nails are hammered in with a hammer. In metal or stone, you need to first drill holes for the screws. To help a screw hold better, it can be inserted into a special fastener called an anchor or wall plug. The difference between a machine screw and a wood screw is that wood screws have pointy ends. Machine screws go into holes that already have a thread or into a nut. And what if there aren't any screws or nails around? Well, then a fixie can turn himself into a screw and screw himself in. Like this. Masterfully done. Fire. Think you can do it? Of course. Yeah. Nolik? Is it okay if I won't go? What do you mean you won't go? <sighs> Wait, I started on the wrong foot. Uh, no, I, I guess it was the right one. Don't be scared. You've done this a thousand times. Uh-huh. You're right. You had to make sure the appliance was turned off first. <sighs> yeah, I should have. This time it's not going to happen to you. It's all under control. Go on. <sighs> I'm still scared to do it. How about you try again? And who came up with this dumb screw idea? According to legend, the screw was invented in ancient times by the great Archimedes. Using his screw-tight mechanism, Archimedes built a special machine for getting water out of a canal. In ancient Rome, people used wooden screws and presses to squeeze the olive oil out of olives. Screws were also used as parts of drills or as lifting jacks. But the use of screws as fasteners did not begin until the 15th century. Soon thereafter, screws became so popular that today it's almost impossible to find an appliance made without one. And if one of these little screws should fall out, we fixies will come to the rescue. Because we don't just turn into screws when we need to hide from humans. We're always ready to do it when help is needed. Nolik, let's try it together. Don't be scared. We're here with you. Ready? And... <gasps> Nolik, watch me, son. I haven't screwed myself in in over a hundred years, but I'm not scared. <laughs> Did you see that? It's a piece of cake. Grandpa's? I'm stuck. It's all my fault. There's no need to worry. Professor Eugenius, can you help us unscrew Grandpa's? I'll be right with you. It got a bit rusty. It's probably old age. I know what will help. A drop of oil. Hey! Ow! Oh. Professor Eugenius, are you okay? I'm okay. Thank you for asking. Look out! It's going to fall! We need to fasten the shelf to the wall! <laughs> no, help! We can't do this without you! Simka, I'm scared too. Nolik, save me! What's going on out there? No big deal, colleague. I just got a little bit buried. <clears throat> Will anyone unscrew me? I wish I could. And we're holding up the shelves. And Nolik? Me too. I did it. I screwed myself in. Well done, Nolik. I knew you could. And who's going to help us now? Elisa will get here shortly. All right. We'll wait for Elisa. Yeah, just as long as her return flight isn't delayed. <gasps> <sighs> the toilet. <laughs> hey, Tom Thomas, you're not allowed to drink water from the toilet. <laughs> I'm not drinking it. Then what? Washing up? In the toilet? Come on now. Then what are you staring inside of there. Well, I think that the toilet's broken. The water just won't stop running. Yeah, so? What do you mean, so? We gotta conserve water. Simka, you're the one that taught me that. You're right, Tom Thomas. It's important not to waste water. But the problem in this toilet isn't where you were looking. Then where? Here in the tank, not the bowl. 
Almost all toilets have tanks that are used for storing water. This water is flushed into the bowl when needed. Water flows into the tank through a water valve that has a float attached to it. As the water level in the tank rises, so does the float. And when there's enough water in the tank, the float closes off the valve and the water stops. But if the float happens to break, the water will keep running through the overflow tube into the bowl. We'll be back soon. <laughs> Look at this. I can't believe how beautiful it is. Ha! I see what's wrong here. This float that we're standing on, it got disconnected for some reason. That's why the water keeps pouring out. I see. And it's going down that tube into the bowl. Well, what's the problem? It's the float. It got disconnected. Can you get it back on? Nope. Sorry. Without Papoos, we can't fix it. We'll get Papoos. And you, Tom Thomas, you'll guard the door. Yeah, or someone could come and flush the toilet while we're working in the tank. And we'll get flushed away. To where? Straight into the sewer. And then it's bye-bye, Tom Thomas, forever. <laughs> The sewage system is a huge network of pipes that run underground. This is where the dirty water from sinks and the waste from toilets is sent. The sewage pipes then carry this dirty water to sewage treatment plants, where the water is cleaned before it is dumped into a river or the sea. Before the first sewage systems were invented, people would just dump their waste right out their windows onto the streets. Oh, the smell in the cities was just awful. Even the first sewage systems didn't put a stop to this terrible smell. This smelly problem wasn't solved until the invention of the modern toilet. At the bottom of the toilet is a bent pipe called the siphon that's filled with water that keeps the smell from getting back into the house. Don't ask me why, but no one goes through that door. It's a secret, Chusaka. Tom Thomas, ready to eat? Not now, Mom. Not even a cookie? Mm. <laughs> All right. Here's what I need you to do. You guard the door so no one flushes the toilet. And that goes for you, too. Oh, it's terrible how much water's getting wasted. It's a good thing you noticed it. It was Tom Thomas who spotted it. <laughs> well, let's get to work. I wasn't planning on it. I was getting ready to take a shower. All right, just don't touch the toilet. What's wrong with it? It's just broken. Really? Let me check it out. It that made you so sad? The toilet? Uh-huh. No need to be sad. The toilet's working just fine. Really? Yeah, I had to check it. <laughs> <laughs> now I need to go and check it too. The combination lock. No, Lee. 
Nick, are you here? Stop your hiding. I'll still find you. No, Lick, is that you? Hey, come on, that's not fair. You saw. Let me go again. I don't want to. You want me to play hide and seek when I got a brand new game to play with? Where is it? I don't see it anywhere in the room. I took it to school with me. For what reason? To show it off. Wow, awesome game. Tom Thomas, can I play your game? Uh-uh, because I'm not done playing with it yet. Now just try asking me to do some favor for you. Hmm, wait, was it a three or a four? Hmm, it could have been five, and I forgot. What about? I forgot the combination, and now I can't even do my homework. Everything I need to finish is inside of there. I'm not climbing in to find out your homework. Don't even ask me. Tom Thomas, why do you look so upset? <sighs> the code for the lock. I don't remember it. Don't you worry. Ha! We'll open it. I know all about a code lock. <laughs> A simple code lock is built with a few disks that have numbers on them. In the center of each disk is a hole with a notch. When all of the disks are turned so their notches line up in a straight row, the lock's pin can slide out freely. And to get the notches to line up, just turn the disks to the lock's code and the lock will open. It's that simple. Looks like we gotta take a look inside the lock. Ah, I see. Nolik, where are you? There's work to do. I won't do it. I'm not gonna help such a greedy boy. Nolik, won't you help me out here? And I won't be so greedy anymore. All right, you broke me down. Only as soon as we're done, you're gonna let me play with the game, right? We'll start turning the discs one at a time, and you yell stop when they're lined up. Stop! Turn the next one now! Stop! Stop! Now try! Yes! Adioop! Tideesh! Hooray! And your code was really simple. Way too simple. The secret numbers and letters that you use to lock something up are called the code or the password. And to make sure your password's a really good one, here are some things you should know. Never choose a password that's really simple for someone else to guess. Like one with numbers or letters that are all the same or are all in order. It's also a bad idea to make a password out of your birth date or name. It's better to think of a password that's a bit more complicated. And don't forget your password once you come up with it. Write down your password on a piece of paper and keep it in a safe place, but don't show it to anybody else. And then, if you happen to forget your code or password, you'll be able to remember it with the help of that piece of paper. And why did you ever put a lock on your backpack? I was hiding the game from the other kids. Then why did you take it to school today? I wanted to show it off to my class. And did you show it? No way. If they would have seen it, they'd be like, I want to use it, I want to play. And so you hid it and didn't show it to anybody? Not to anyone. Then why take it to school, silly? To show it off there. You're just some show off. You're just some greedy, oops. Sorry, once greedy boy. Will you let us play now? <sighs> play away. We're not bothering you, are we? Can you jump a little easier? You're shaking the whole desk. The string lights. We're almost all done. Yeah. Now Santa Claus is gonna come over 
He'll say, one, two, three. Lights light up the tree. Then we'll get our presents. The real Santa Claus? Yeah, for sure. The real Santa Claus will come to you? You'll see for yourself. He comes to me every year. Okay, so let's practice. One, two, three. Lights light up the tree. Huh? Oh, the string lights burned out. And we don't have another one. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is almost here. Is the tree ready? No, not quite yet. Oh no, oh no. What are we gonna do? I'll be right back. Tom Thomas, what do you think? Will Santa Claus give you any presents if there aren't any lights on the tree? No way. It's not right without the light. It just wouldn't be magical. Papus, Masia, Santa Claus is about to come to Tom Thomas, but the string lights on the tree, they all burned out. They all burned out? Really? The bulbs in a string light are connected together like a chain with a piece of wire between each bulb. When you turn on a string light, electricity flows through the wire, lighting up each of the bulbs along its way. But if any of the bulbs gets burned out, the circuit will be broken and the electricity will stop flowing. That means one bad bulb will make all of the lights go out. So if you want to fix a string light with a bad bulb, the answer is really simple. Just find the bad one and put a new one in. So, do we have a spare bulb around here? I'll get it for you. I know where it is. Tom Thomas, hold up Santa Claus for a while. We need a little time to find and replace that bad light for you. I'll try to. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is already here. Ho, ho, ho! I got one thing to do. So, Let's find the bad bulb. Okay, Papoose, let's go. Hmm, this one's working. Maybe this one burned out. Nope. And that? It lights fine. Santa Claus is getting very hot out here. Hold on. Simka, what's up? We checked all the bulbs, but couldn't find a bad one. Huh, I guess this year won't be magical. Okay, Mom, just come on in. Ho, ho, ho. Hello there, Tom Thomas. So tell me now, have you been good all year? Huh, why aren't the lights on the tree burning? So then let's say it together. One, two, three. Ow! Papoose, I found one more bulb. Here's the one that's not working. One, one two, two, three. three. Light, light up, up the, the tree. tree. Huh. Now we need to replace this bulb with a new one. So where's Masia? Show your light, O oh tree. Hooray! Hooray! Ho, 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 ho. Ooh, that was really hard. I see you already got it shining. But where did you manage to find a new bulb? We got Papus to act as the bulb. <gasps> Tideesh! Tideesh! Ah, uh, what a hero. Pull me up so we can put this bulb in. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. Our spirits light up. Whoa! And on the tree. <laughs> yeah! And on, the tree. on Christmas ah, Eve. Nice box. The lights burn brighter. Every year when no one is expecting. From some place that no one could conceive. On Christmas Eve, on Christmas Eve, the clock it seems on Christmas Eve is ticking slower. Then suddenly, on Christmas Eve, a miracle on Christmas Eve, no one believes on Christmas Eve comes out of nowhere. Every year when no one is expecting, from some place that no one could conceive. Six 
the time machine. Oh, wow! What kind of device is that? Maybe an alarm clock? No, this is a time machine! Beep, 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 beep! Time machines, they don't exist. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> what a shame. I learned pew, that, pew, pew, studied pew, that. Pew, pew, well pew, done, Tula. Pew, 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 oh. Oh. What did I just bump into? What do you mean, what? Into a time machine. But I thought time machines aren't for real. Of course they are. You get in and take off for the future. Or the past. Splendid. Lots of us would love to be able to travel in a time machine. Maybe to go back in time and fix a bad grade. Or to get a peek into the future. Of course it would be interesting. But time travel isn't possible. And thank goodness! Just imagine how mixed up everything could get. Someone brings back a dinosaur from the past, while someone else brings aliens from the future. No one would need to invent anything. Appliances would sit unused, and fixies would have no work to do. It's awful! So you've got no idea of the answer. I studied this, but I don't remember. Too bad, because tomorrow we've got a hard test. Make sure you're prepared. I'm sure I'm gonna fail. You're gonna pass? You studied all of this, right? So? So you just need to stop worrying so much, that's all. I wish I could. <laughs> Poor girl. How can we help her? Hey, I know how. This morning, Tula believed that that thing over there is a real time machine. Sounds like an anti-scientific plan. Stop worrying. It's simple. We'll send you to tomorrow. You'll sit down, take the test, and come right back here. I wish I could go. It's like a dress rehearsal. The main thing's not to worry. Then what do I do? Uh, you just pull on that wire and you'll get them back. Well, time to go. Wow, it's tomorrow. Hi there. Are you ready? Uh-huh. Grandpa's got sick, so I'll be giving you your tests. I'm scared. Don't worry, it's just a rehearsal. Well then, who had the best test? Congratulations, Tula! Oh, so cool! cool. Awesome. That wasn't scary at all. Impressive. By the way, what's wrong with the professor? Uh, Grandpa's... Uh, you know, don't you? A bolt fell on his head. You dropped it, remember? I did? Yeah, yesterday. I'm not sure I like this future. Well, how did it go there? Later. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Oh! Leave this on until tomorrow. What is this? Come back! No! If I do, I could hurt you! Me? What for? Wouldn't it be incredible to travel into the future and see what you will become? Unfortunately, that's only possible in our dreams. But if you have a dream and aren't afraid of challenges and setbacks, your future can turn out just the way you imagined. Do you want to become a champion? Then you need to start your training right away! Do you dream of becoming the best programmer in the world? Then first pull up that grade in math class! Do you dream of sailing the oceans? Then you'll need to do a lot of reading because a captain has so much he needs to learn. Start creating your future right now. And we Fixies will be right there to help you, making sure the machines you need to reach your dreams will keep on working for years and years to come. Hey there, are you ready? Uh-huh. So far, everything's exactly the same. Tula, take this, please. It worked. And pass out the tests. You may begin. These questions are different. Who had the best test? Congratulations, Tula! What am I worried about? I know everything is going to be fine. Tish! Oh, uh, well then. All of your test results are great. <sighs> Only none of you could guess what this device is. What do you mean? Isn't it a time machine? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's for <laughs> automatically watering plants, that's all. You see? Cool, 
right? Wow, it's fantastic. So hang on. You guys tricked me? But you passed the test, right? Well, all right. Then I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> the Kaleidoscope. Tom Thomas, when are you going to give me a peek at your new ball? I just can't wait. I told you, you can see it as soon as I hang it up. You're not peeking, are you? No, I'm not. Oh! So, can I look at it now? Sure, take a look. Which one? This one. <gasps> you broke it! It's okay, don't be sad. I know what to do. <laughs> Tom Thomas, look inside the kaleidoscope. What for? I looked already. Come on, there's something in there I'm sure you've never seen. Whoa. <laughs> cool, isn't it? What is it? It's my own invention, a pirate kaleidoscope. Glass, right? Uh-huh. It's great, I really like it. Tom Thomas, hi there. I heard that you got a pretty ball to hang on the tree. Shh! Can I see it? It's right there. Where? There. No! Oh, that's just terrible! Why'd you do that, Simka? Come on now, I just cheered him up. How? Tell me! With the kaleidoscope, remember what Grandpa's taught us? Do you know what makes a kaleidoscope have such beautiful patterns? Ah, it's because pieces of multicolored glass are tumbling around in there. And it's also because it has mirrors inside. Usually there are three of them, and they are arranged facing each other. That way, each piece of glass makes many, many reflections that create the kaleidoscope's beautiful symmetrical patterns. By the way, you can put just about anything you want inside a kaleidoscope, and each different thing makes its own special pattern. Yes, there are all kinds of kaleidoscopes. Some with buttons inside, some with flowers, and even some that are filled with insects. Once, a very rich man had a kaleidoscope made with precious stones inside. <laughs> yeah, it probably wouldn't have been nearly as beautiful if he had just filled it up with money. Tom Thomas, look inside the kaleidoscope. I already saw it. It's pirates. Nah, it's not about pirates. We changed it. Go on, look and see. Wow. You like it? A lot. Hey, what did you put in there? A few pieces of the ball that you smashed. It's even better for Christmas, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, that didn't work at all. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas! We came to take a look at that splendid new Christmas suit. Oh, what's what? wrong? Oh, don't even ask us that. I've got it! Tom Thomas! What? Look inside the kaleidoscope! Again? I don't want to. And I'm telling you, you've got to. Fine. Cool, yeah! Merry Christmas! Thanks so much. Now, don't you feel good again? Yeah. It's really something. And you're the first human in the world that's ever seen it. How about that? Turn it! It's great, isn't it? Wondrous designs that tickle the eye In the kaleidoscope Shimmering scenes Gingerbread trees
everybody. Tom Thomas, I came to look for myself at that beautiful Christmas. Shh. It's okay. What's more important? Having such awesome friends? Or some ball hanging from a tree? The baby monitor. Oh! It's my old baby monitor. On. Check, check. Checking. One, two, three. Checking. It's working. Hmm. Why don't we give it to the Johnsons? They just had a baby the other day. Oh, uh -uh, this is mine. And I'm planning on using it. Aren't you a little too big for it? No, I'm not big at all. Well, I didn't realize that you're still a little boy. And a greedy one at that. They're never going to notice this. Hey, Fixies, are you here? We're here now. Why did you call us? I got to show you how I turned into a mind reader. I find that just a little hard to believe. OK, then I'll show you. I'll leave you alone, and then you'll hide this button wherever you want. Then I'll come back and find it. <laughs> you got it. So where's a good hiding place? Well, we got to think of one. Uh, right here, under the keyboard. Great! Go on, Nolik. Come on in. We're ready for you. And now, I'm going to read your thoughts. Here I go. Hm. You hit the button here. Look! Ta-da! He really does read minds. Oh, that was a lucky guess. Bet you can't do it again. Well, I bet you I can. We're gonna have to be sneakier. Verda, she's the most beautiful girl in our class. She knows it, too, and doesn't hesitate to use it. She can even be a bit sneaky. Like when she needs help with her homework, then Digit suddenly becomes her best friend. But if she doesn't want to carry her pack a mat, she'll say, Fire, please help me. You're just such a strong fixie. But all us boys like her just the same. Digit does, and Nolik does, and I guess I do too. Although, I really like Simka more. Or maybe Verda. Or both of them. I haven't decided yet. Verda can be difficult and even bossy sometimes. But one thing I know for sure, Verda's a good friend. A friend that'll always come help. Well, that is if she's able to pry herself away from the mirror. I think that we should throw it down into this pencil cup. But then we concentrate on another place. Hmm, that is good, but it won't work, Fixies. Come on in. Uh-huh. <laughs> hmm. Aha! Uh -huh. It's in here. Tirish? Simka, were you thinking about the cup? No, I swear. And my mind was blank. Then who did, huh? Hmm. Uh-huh. Tom Thomas, what do you say we go again? As many times as you want. I know how he's been doing all of this. It's a baby monitor. That's how he can hear what we're saying. I don't get it. A baby monitor helps parents watch over their babies. The system has two units that look like wireless telephones. The parents keep one of the units by their side and put the other one in the room where the baby is sleeping. If the baby suddenly wakes up and starts crying, the unit in the baby's room will pick up the sound and send it by radio waves to the parents' unit. Mom or Dad will hear the crying and go and comfort their child. And so he's listening to us now. This time I know what we should do. We'll hide it under the globe. Uh-huh. Aha! Huh? Where is it? If you read our minds, you'd find your button under the baby monitor. You tricked me. That's really not nice. And spying on us is nice, you think? I'm sorry, I just thought it'd be fun. Well, anyhow, Tom Thomas, you're too old for this thing. Unless, of course, you still need it. 
I'm not a baby. I was just, you know, checking it. I'll go and give it to Mom. Mom, I'm not greedy. About what? Let's give this monitor to the Johnsons. And this car is for their baby boy. Hmm, I don't think that baby's big enough yet for your car. So what? Soon he's gonna get bigger and become a big boy, right? Like me. The toothbrush. Once I finish you, my top secret growth potion, I will create my own giant canine crew! And then I'll rule the... Whoa! Wow, this is super! You're better than a TV show. Oh yeah, it's fun, but it's gonna end badly. <laughs> Tom Thomas, get ready for bed. I'm going, Dad. But first, my secret recipe. We start with a bit of carboniterous. And now a little bit of bread and butteress. And finally, Beard of Fumarissa. Chusaka! Don't be afraid. Drink, my baby. And you'll grow ten times your size. What? It doesn't taste good? Oh, right. I forgot it needed stirring. This hypersonic mixer will do the trick. Tom Thomas, you shouldn't use what doesn't belong to you. That's your father's toothbrush. Ah! Hey, cut it out! You're acting crazy! <laughs> boom! Hey, boom! Boom, boom! Uh-oh. You said it. Uh-oh. You, Tom Thomas, are a big boy, but your brain is smaller than Nullix. Why, thank you. Just go put the toothbrush back in its place, I'm like you never touched it. Nah, that's not right at all. Tom Thomas, what's up? I'm almost done, Dad. Simka Nolik, please, I really need your help. No panicking. First, we need to understand what could have broken inside of there. An electric toothbrush is really simple, as long as you know these three parts. The battery, the motor, and a very clever mechanism that connects the motor with the bristles. The whole secret to the toothbrush is right in there. That mechanism uses the spinning of the motor to make the bristles move very fast back and forth, from left to right, from right to left. And that's how it brushes your teeth. So what can we do about it? Here's what we do. First we take out the motor, then we take the gears out and then the mechanism. How much time do we need to do that? One or two hours. What? No! Just listen here, Tom Thomas. You need to open up the battery compartment. Wait for me right here. These are your teeth. Well, I mean, they're not your teeth, but you get what I'm saying. Nowadays, we use a toothbrush to clean our teeth, but it wasn't always that way. The ancient Egyptians used a chewed stick to scrape their teeth, while the ancient Greeks rubbed their teeth with a rag. And the Vikings, well, who knows what they used? And then, only 200 years ago, an Englishman named William Addis came up with something better. He drilled holes into a meat bone, inserted bunches of bristles into them, and there you go, the toothbrush. And here's what I need to tell you all as a fixie. That is, as a master repairman. You need to make sure to brush your teeth often, especially after eating, or you'll be getting them repaired often at the dentist. Well, is something wrong with the mechanism? No, it's fine. Is the motor burned out? No. Then what's wrong with it? You're not gonna believe it. But the battery died. That's all? I know what to do. I'll put in new ones. Shh. Your dad turned the toothbrush on. Looks like everything's fine. It's working. Ooh, way to go. Excellent. Your dad will never find out what kind of slop you mixed up with his brush. 
What slop? <laughs> How dare you, Nolik? How dare you refer to my mighty potion like this? Tom Thomas, somehow soap got all over my toothbrush. Can you explain that? Ay, ay, ay. Well, you got caught. What do you say now? <laughs> the heart. Where's my peckament? It's not here either. I think my head's got a screw loose. Oh! Tom Thomas, why are you throwing your stuff around? Oh, because I got a real problem. What is it? I can't decide which club I should pick. Johnny signed up for robotics, and Katya's gonna be in chess. You call that a problem? Go with Johnny. And why not Katya? <laughs> Then go with chess. But they don't have robots. My mom told me I should listen to my heart. Do you know how to do that? <laughs> I found it. See you. Gotta go. Nolik. Simka can tell you. She knows everything. The heart is the main pump of a living organism. It's a unique muscular organ with a multitude of blood vessels attached to it. The main function of the heart is to continuously move blood throughout the body. The human heart pumps about six liters of blood every minute, even though this pump is not that large. Make a fist. Your heart is about the same size as that. To make sure your heart stays healthy, you need to strengthen it with plenty of exercise and a healthy diet. Nolik, please come help me. Why me? Tool is stronger. Huh? Interesting. And do you know what is meant by the word heartlessness? Well, I think it's uh, some kind of human illness. May I? Tula. Heartlessness is when a human or a fixie leaves someone who has a problem behind. Uh, uh, huh? I... Uh, 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 uh. Uh. Thank you very much, young man. Uh, I mean young fixie. Heartlessness, does it last forever? Of course not. We just need to help one another more often. Uh-huh. Uh, uh. Ah! Tom Thomas, my friend. Here I am. How are you? How am I? Why do you care? Oh, by the way, I found out how you can listen to your heart. You need this tube. It's called, uh... Stethoscope? A stethoscope, but I don't have one. That's what I'm for. <laughs> the thing is way too tiny. Hmm. Ah, your mom must have one. Oh, yeah. Well? It's beating. Loudly. And what is it saying to you? Not a word. And now? It's beating. Huh? What was that? <laughs> this is just absurd. A heart can't talk. You know what? Why don't you just try again? Chess. Who cares about chess? Robots are way cooler. This voice reminds me of someone. Heh, <laughs> so that's what you look like, my itty bitty heart. Well, I did it from the bottom of my heart. When a human is at rest, his heart beats between 60 and 100 times per minute. This rhythm is called the pulse rate. Place two fingers on your wrist or your neck. Can you hear it? Boom, 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 boom. You can count the beats. When you're sleeping, your pulse slows down. But when you get excited, run, or get worried or afraid, your heart begins to beat faster and pumps the blood harder. 
Sometimes it feels like it's beating so fast that people say, oh, my heart is going to jump out of my chest. But don't be afraid, it's not going anywhere. And when people say, listen to your heart, they don't mean that your heart can talk. It means that you should trust yourself and listen to your feelings. And then you'll definitely find the answer you're looking for. Looks like at the end of the day, I'm heartless. I couldn't help my friend at all. No, Lick. But you helped. You really did. I finally figured out which club I want to join. Robotics, like I told you? Not that. I want to learn medicine. The Aquarium. The coast is clear. The humans have left. Come on, let's go. Masia, why are the fish looking so tired? Because they're not getting enough air in there. The water in the aquarium is dirty and it needs air, but the filter isn't working. The filter? Yes, that device over there. These fish need our help, and if we don't do something right now, they could die. Right. First, I'll fix that light while you and Masia go over there and see what is wrong with the filter. But I want to go and look at the filter, too. You're too small for this. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And you're a giant. I mean, you're like six feet tall, huh? That's enough arguing. Nolik, let's go. Well, let's check it. Not working. Nolik, where are you? I'm up here. What are you doing up there? Nothing. Holding on. We don't have time for that. Get down. We have to get this switch working. Masia, what's the matter with the filter? Well, probably something's caught inside and it's stopping the motor from turning. A filter is used to keep the aquarium water clean. A motor in a filter turns the paddles and pumps water through a fine net or a sponge. The dirt in the water gets trapped in there, and the cleaned water is put back into the aquarium. Many filters not only clean the water, but also add air to it, so there will be more oxygen in the water. You see, even though fish live their lives in water, they need oxygen just like all of us. of ways for people to breathe underwater. As an experiment, try putting an empty glass upside down in water and you'll see that some of the air stays in there. That's the idea behind the ancient diving bell. An empty bell was lowered under the water and some of the air remained in there for the diver to breathe. And about 200 years ago, the first diving suits were invented. The diver got air from a hose that started above the water. This let the diver spend a long time under the water and even walk around on the bottom, but just not too far. Later on, people learned to squeeze a lot of air inside of metal tanks, and that's when scuba diving started. Scuba divers breathe the air stored in these tanks so they can swim freely and even dive deep down below the water. Our work is done. The light is on and the filter is working. And the fish look so exciting! As if they're not fish, but monsters. Thank goodness they're behind glass. <gasps> Papus! Just hang on! We'll be right there to save you! <sighs> but I don't even have my pack mat 
Ooh, look how they're chopping their teeth. They must be so hungry. You're right, they're hungry. Nolik, come on. Fish. They're so ungrateful. We went ahead and fixed their filter, and all they wanted to do was gobble us up. And I'm the one who saved you from them. I was the one watching what was going on. Whoop. <gasps> oh, gee. Hold it. Do you think giving her some uh, food will help? As long as you're not thinking that food is me. Whoa! The electric train. Suddenly, the Earth was attacked by an alien spaceship. If help arrives here on time, we'll be saved. Move faster, faster. Come on, get off the train. Move it, move it. Tom Thomas, we came here to play. Oh, finally you're here. I need some aliens for this game. What kind of aliens are you talking about? Just plain old aliens. You know the ones. They come destroy the Earth and just about everything. We don't want to destroy anything at all. Why can't we be uh, the train engineers, huh? Train engineers? <laughs> you don't know anything about driving a train. Oh, we know plenty about trains. Humans invented the railroad long ago. But back then, the rails were made out of wood. People didn't start making metal rails until the end of the 18th century. But the first railroad cars had no engines to give them their power. Instead, they used horses to pull them along. Later, horses were replaced by the steam engine. Wood and coal would burn in their furnaces to boil the water in the boilers, making the steam that turned their wheels. And the Fixies were there to help those trains go, making sure all of the parts could work together smoothly. But now steam engines have long gone away. The railroad uses electricity now for its power. These electric trains race along the railway at almost the speed of an airplane. So you might know trains, but you'll still be the aliens. This railroad is mine. So you're gonna play the way I want. The train is unloaded and leaving the station. You can play choo-choo by yourself. And I will. Pew, 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 pew. Hmm. Hey, why did you stop? This doesn't help either. It's not going at all. Simka! No lick. Where are you? Did I hurt your feelings or something? Mom, is Dad gonna be home soon? No, is something the matter? We've been attacked by evil aliens. The train has to be fixed right away, or we'll never escape them. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. You want some tea? Ah, I've got to think of something. Simka, Nolik, I know you're in there. Please forgive me if I hurt your feelings. I'm really sorry. There's nobody but you that can save the world from the evil aliens. All right, it talked us back into it. Well, let's go and check the rails. Nolik, follow me. I'm faster. Whoa! Well, so much for being faster. It looks like I found the brake. Tom Thomas, the rails are broken. I know, and so? You know, but that's why your train's not running. Just like a real train, model trains run on electricity. But there aren't any batteries inside the locomotive to pull the other cars. The engine gets its electricity from the rails. Each piece of the rail has a wire in it. 
If the rails come apart, the electricity can't flow through the track and get to the train. And without electricity, the train's engine just stops going. So reconnect the rails and your train will run again. Uh-huh. Put them together. Ah. Yes! Hooray! The train's running! Way to go! So will you play with me now? And which way are we playing this time? Whatever you want, I'm with you. The train rushes down the track with Nola as its engineer. When suddenly, from out of the sky, comes an alien spaceship. Greetings to you, O oh people of planet Earth. I come from far away, from another galaxy. Have you come to destroy everything? No, I've come to fix it all. Oh! Invisible ink. Tell anyone? Nobody. We promise. Uh, are you gonna open that thing or not? Huh. There's nothing there. Hmm. Is this a joke or something? Maybe she didn't feel like writing you anything. Then why would she put a note in there? Wait a second. And what if she wrote that letter with a special kind of invisible ink? Wow, I've never heard of it. If you want to keep what's written in a letter secret, you can write it with a special liquid called invisible ink or security ink. You can make invisible ink yourself by mixing lemon juice, milk, or baking soda with water. Then just dip a stick or a brush in it and write on a plain piece of paper like this. You can't see anything, right? To make the invisible ink visible again, the paper needs to be warmed up with something like an iron. But that's a secret. Well, Simka, you might be right. Only what about the iron? I can't use it. But your mom can, and right now she's doing the ironing. Yeah? Well, that changes everything. Hold on! If that really is a secret letter, then no one should be allowed to see it. Even your mother. What can I do then? Ah, I know what. Mom, can you iron my shirt too, please, will ya? What's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong, it's just that the pocket's wrinkled. Ah, sure, I'll do it. Since when did you start worrying about things like this? All done. Thanks, Mom. Huh. <sighs> that should do it. What? What is it? Huh? Tom Thomas, I really like you. <laughs> Katya. Katya is in love with you, isn't she? And what about you? Do you like her? Uh, I don't know. She does get straight A's. You like her. <laughs> you and Katya kissing in a tree. Kayla, no, oh. stop your teasing. Well, are you going to write her back? You think I should? Of course, silly. I'm scared that someone will see it. Then why don't you write it with invisible ink like she did? Yeah, go get a lemon. Nowadays, it isn't very common for people to write letters by hand and send them by regular mail. Today, people mostly send letters through the Internet. But even electronic letters should be written with some of the same simple rules of politeness used in handwritten letters. For instance, you need to write a greeting at the beginning of your letter, and a few kind words at the end are always appreciated. Something like hugs and kisses, or all the best, or see you soon. 
And before you send off your letter, it's best to read it through to check for any mistakes. And one more thing. If you receive a message from someone, don't take too long to answer them, because they might think that you'd forgotten about them, and that can hurt their feelings. To say it simply, when you're right, be polite. Go on, write. And what should I write? Come on, tell the truth. Just write this. Forgive me, Katya. Only there's another girl I really like. My one and only Suka. Mm, no lick! If you don't like it, then why don't you think it up? Tom Thomas, just go ahead and write how you feel deep down in your heart for Katya. Katya, I like you too. Like that? Is that all I have to write? Would that be okay? It's lovely. K-I-S-S-I. Just zip it, will ya? Tom Thomas, is that everything? And did you make sure to check that you didn't make any mistakes? No, but I'll check right now. Huh, all the words disappeared. Well, if there's something wrong, only Katya will find it. The Chick. Ah, Professor Eugenius is making breakfast. Only the eggs will never get cooked at this temperature. Doing? You can't heat up these eggs to temperatures that are this hot. Why can't you? The chicks, you'll kill them. What chicks? Where? This appliance. Do you even know what it is? I thought it was an egg cooker. You thought it was an egg cooker? Listen up. I do not want to see you around this thing. Not anywhere close. Got it? I won't get close to it. But, Grandpus, we don't even know what this is for. It's called an incubator. To help her chicks hatch, a mother hen sits on her eggs for a long time, keeping them warm with the heat of her body. An incubator is a device for hatching chicks that is used in place of the mother hen. It's always nice and warm inside, just like under a chicken's wing, but not too hot. An incubator can even turn the eggs so they get just the right amount of heat all over. Chicks that are hatched in an incubator are no different from the chicks that are hatched without them. Fire! What? This thunderstorm is really scary. Let's be scared together. I'm not scared at all. Me neither. I was joking. Just joking with you. What do you think? Are the chicks scared in there? Holy moly! Wow! That was a big one. Even the electricity got turned off. Ah, uh, the incubator turned off too. And the temperature is dropping. And for little chicks, is that bad? I'm sure it is. It's cold in here. These chicks need help, and Grandpa's isn't around. Then we're gonna have to save these chicks without him. Nolik, get the door open. Help me. I can't. Grandpa said I can't get near the incubator, so try opening it yourself. <laughs> you can't do it. And I can't help you. But the chicks are going to die of cold. Ugh, let's just do it. But don't you go and tattle to Grandpa's. I promise. Ah. Hooray! It's a bit early for hooray. Handle? Yeah, we'll warm up the chicks with the fire. Class. Time for hooray? Now? Yeah. Tanish! Like sparrows, ducks, storks, and ostriches, all birds lay eggs and sit on them to help them hatch. And it's not only birds. Other animals like snakes, crocodiles, and even turtles have babies that they hatch from eggs. To protect their children, they try to hide their eggs, like deep in the bushes, in the cracks of rocks, or in the sand. By the way, roe is also little eggs, just without the shells. From this fish roe, little hatchlings are born that will grow into big fish.
and from tiny frog row, tadpoles hatch that will then develop into full-grown adult frogs. And you've heard of dinosaurs, right? Well, those giant reptiles that lived millions of years ago, they also hatched out of eggs. What happened to the electricity in here? It's a blackout from the thunderstorm, I guess. This is just awful. <gasps> My incubator! <gasps> Someone lit a candle, and the temperature is normal. So who put the candle in there? Tell us right now! No, Lick. Don't be a tattletale. It was me. By yourself. By myself? Of course yourself. I wasn't allowed near it. Well, yeah, he wasn't allowed near it. All by yourself. Then well done. You saved the chicks. Our hero. So, Fire, follow his example. And you, Nolik, accept our heartfelt thanks. Look inside. <laughs> They're starting to hatch. All right, Fire, come take a look. Now I'm allowing you. A little chick. It's so cute. And so yellow. Look at him. What a little sweetie. Fire. What? Well, I really know who saved him. Tish. The exercise machine. Nolik? I'm not here. You haven't seen me today at all. What's up with you? There's going to be this race, and it starts really soon. It's the boys against the girls, their team against ours. And what? And what? I'm the smallest one on the team, and I'll let everyone down. That's why I'm hiding, because I don't want my team to lose. You can't just give up. You can learn to run faster if you want. You think? Of course. That's what exercisers are for. You need a treadmill to get stronger. Class! And where can we get one? We'll make it ourselves. Exercise machines were invented so people could work out without going outside. For instance, a treadmill lets you walk or run for a very long time while moving in one place. A treadmill's main part is a conveyor belt that is driven around by an electric motor. Today's smart treadmills have the ability to measure your speed, the distance that you've run, your heart rate, and even the results of previous workouts. There, it's all done. Teesh! It's time to start your first training session. How will I learn to run really fast? If you keep turning it so slowly. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, that's a little too fast. Oh, sorry about that. I got it. That's what you call training. Tom Thomas, so, what do you think? Maybe I trained enough? Not yet. You need to keep going. Oh, I can't do this any longer. Let's stop. Whew. No way. Turn the handle. Yeah. There are all sorts of exercise machines to help you improve your health. This one simulates skiing. It exercises your arms, legs, and heart. And this one, you can row like a rowboat. And if pedaling's your thing, an exercise bike lets you get a great workout, no matter how bad the weather is outside. There are also weight training machines. These machines can help you build big, strong muscles and tone the shape of your body. However, you can still get great exercise without these bulky machines. There are plenty of much simpler devices that you can find room for in any house. Like a chin-up bar for doing pull-ups, a wall-mounted ladder or rope for climbing, or jump ropes, weights, hula hoops, or balls. The important thing is to just exercise. <laughs> okay, girls, <laughs> hold on to your hats. Oh, how scary. We'll show them who's gonna win. Right, Tula? I'm gonna do my best. Tula will definitely beat Nolik. We gotta step it up. It's time to get this race going. Runners, are you ready? I'm ready. ready. On your marks, everyone get set, go! Go, Come on, Come on. Come on, Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
are gonna win. Nola will never catch up with Tula. Oh my gosh! Nola he appears to be gaining ground. But look at him! He's looking for your head! Go on, Nola, go! You got it, buddy! Come on, buddy! Hey, look at him! He's flying! All of that work on the exercise machine really helped! Like, where are you going? The finish is there! just not fair. It was a tie. And a very noble one. All right, you just wait for the next race. Nolik's gonna win it big time. Now it's time for you all to get up on that winner stand. <coughs> oh no, all the first places are taken. For you, we'll find one. The star. And so, this is our solar system, and it consists of... Friends, you're not going to believe it. I found... I discovered an unknown star. That is superb, Kali. Yeah, and today, journalists will visit the laboratory for an interview. Who's going to be interviewed? If you weren't late, you'd know that. I had to do my hair. They're here. Everyone hide. in the universe with billions of hot glowing spheres that everybody knows as stars. Stars are each born out of huge clouds of gas and dust that are called nebulas. We see stars in the sky as tiny dots, but that's only because they are very, very far away. The closest star to our planet is the sun. Even though the sun isn't the hugest star, it still gives us the heat and light we need to live. Professor Eugenius is a celebrity now, on a global scale. Yeah. Hey, did you see? Verda also got on the cover. No joke. Where? <gasps> and I think we look pretty good together. So, who wants my autograph? <laughs> we'll have to wait till after school. Uh -uh. It's time to go. Hey, aren't you going? Not right now. My colleague and I have more important business. What colleague? The professor. Both of us have become celebrities. Verda, you got on that cover totally by accident. Uh, uh, uh. Somebody's jealous. <laughs> well, we've got our new star. <laughs> now, what should I name it? A colleague? Huh? Why don't you name the new star Verda? After all, it does sound pretty. Verda, Verda. Hmm. Like a vertex whirling around. <laughs> That's a great idea. It's a shame you didn't get my autograph, because that new star now has my name, Verda. <laughs> and now an elaborate celebration needs to be thrown in my honor. I mean, mine and the professor's, of course. What celebration are you talking about? With a red carpet and flowers? Why are you just standing there? Make it happen! The poor girl thinks she's a star. Absolutely. So what can we do about it? With lunatics, it's better not to argue. That's what I read. Then let's play your silly game. <laughs> your Majesty, your red carpet awaits. Then unroll it. And the flowers? Am I supposed to do everything myself? Of course not. Here, Your Highness, your crown. All right, now we're talking. 
I am a star. She's totally lost it. Mm -hmm. He's coming. Finally, finally, my dream is reality. Hi. Ah, oh, my little fixie friends, it's you here. I'm so honored you gathered here to congratulate me today. <laughs> us? Yes, us, them, we. We all should celebrate. No, I mean you and I. <laughs> now show us what you're carrying. Uh, of course, the certificate. It says this star discovered by Professor Eugenius has been registered with the name VE03732. We should start calling our big star from now on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's so funny? A clear night is perfect for searching in the sky for constellations. The easiest one to find is the Great Bear or the Big Dipper, which looks like a soup ladle. If you draw a line through the two outside stars of the Big Dipper, you'll find the bright North Star, which is part of a constellation called the Little Bear or the Little Dipper. A bit further is the W-shaped Cassiopeia. And these three stars that are next to each other are well known as the Belt of Orion. If you draw a line through them, you'll find a star named Sirius. It's part of the Greater Dog constellation, and it's the brightest star in the night sky. And on the other side of it, there is the star Aldebaran of the constellation Taurus. And these are but a few of the most visible stars. It's not even possible to imagine how many stars there really are in the universe. Tula? I'm here. Fire. Here. VE73032? Is that someone new? Yeah, we've got a new student. She's a star. A new giant star. <laughs> <laughs> the drain. Hey, Nolik, come help me. The fan in the computer needs dusting. Not right now. Me and Tom Thomas are painting a card for his parents' anniversary. Oh, look, who are you? You must be so tired. Hi, Simka. It's really great you're here. I have a question. Twelfth anniversary, is it spelled with an F or is it with a V? Uh, you know what? First put down the number 12 and then put a dash on there and then a TH. Oh, right. But first I'll change the water. I'll be right back. Mama left her ring here. Whoa! Uh, no, uh, uh, no! Oh no, what have I done? Uh, I spoiled my mom and dad's uh, special day. Where? In the bathroom? My mom's ring was lying there, and, and I dropped it into the sink, and now it's washed away. Uh, there goes the day. It didn't wash anywhere. Don't you know anything about how a drain trap works? About a what? A drain trap's a special curved pipe under the sink basin. Water flows out of the faucet and flows down into the drain trap. And after that, it goes down to the sewer. But when you turn off the water, not all of it washes away. Some of it stays down in the drain trap. It's made that way so the smell from the sewer won't get back into the house. A ring is much heavier than water, so if you happen to drop it down the drain, it won't wash away. It will stay at the bottom of the drain trap. Well, that means we still got a chance. Yeah, but how in the world can we get it out of that trap? Who knows? I don't know how to swim. Don't worry, it's all under control. Do you have any thread? Plenty of it. Go get it, and I'll be back in a flash. Hmm. I can't fix it like this. I need my welder. Papoos! I need to borrow your pack a mat for a little while. Now that's a coincidence. I need to use it too. Masia, then I need to use your pack a mat. What? I'll bring it right back. Hey, where are you going? Just watch what you're doing, dear. Just like the name says, Fixies live to help machines and appliances. But machines are very big and Fixies are very small, so they can't get by without tools. Long ago, Fixies worked with just about anything they could find. Little feathers, threads, pins, but now they have backpacks called Hackamats. Inside of Hackamat are all sorts of tools. 
Just push the button and the Pac-A-Mat spins around quickly shooting out a hook or a magnet or even a parachute. Every adult fixie has their own Pac-A-Mat. But before children can get them, they have to go to school and study hard and then pass an exam before they have the rights of a full-fledged fixie. And it's only after all of that that young fixies get their own Pac-A-Mats. And what? You're going down there with just that on? Not just like this. <laughs> yeah, like that. Huh? She was just saying, when I tug on the thread, you need to pull me up. I got it. He just said, I got it. She said, she doesn't need me to repeat what you say. what fixies are for. Tom Thomas, who are you talking with in there? Oh, your mom came back. No one. Hey, can you turn back into fixies? I gotta ask you a question. I forgot, should I write 12th anniversary with an F or do I write with a V? Just, Just write, write the number. number. You're right. The fixie phone. Tom Thomas! Huh? Try to guess what we have with us. You guess what I have. A banana. A race car. No, not that. Chocolate. A, p a pair of socks. Ha! <laughs> Do you give up? My dad bought a new phone for himself and gave me his old one. He said I can keep it. Oh, wow! And what have you got? Look! Ah, you got a telephone, too. It's better than that. This is a fixie phone. Papu's got himself a new fixie phone. And he gave this old one to Simka. And can you make calls on it? Uh, take a guess. Come on, let me show him. <laughs> hi there, Papu's. Hi, Nolik. Why are you calling? Uh, just to say hi. Nolik, don't just call me if you know I'm working. All right. So what? I can make calls on my phone. Calls to humans, that is. But to fixies, you can't. A fixie phone is a smartphone made just for fixies. Not only can fixies call each other with it, but they can get onto their own special fixie internet. On a fixie phone, you can find a camera, a flashlight, news, games, movies, and fixie ditties. Those are the fixies' favorite songs. Fixie kids love them, and so do their parents, because Fixie phones can easily let parents know where their kids are and whether or not they're in trouble. Over the years, humans have learned how to turn telephones into mobile phones and mobile phones into smartphones. They use them to call each other and to go on to their internet. A smartphone is almost as powerful as a computer, but they still have a long way to go to be as good as Fixie phones. Yeah, that's really cool, guys. Only this phone does the same. But can your phone do this? Take a look over here. You mean here? It's just a mouse. And now, look here. Whoa! But he's not... he's not on there. But look, he's here. And that's not all. Watch. A mouse helps the user navigate around the computer. And when we move it... You get it? No one else can see the Fixie except for you. And he can help you. Super! Oh, it'd be great to have my own Fixie phone. What are you talking about? You're not a Fixie. Uh, what a shame. I'm off to school, guys. 
So upset. He even forgot to take his phone. I have an idea. My smartphone's my best friend. I love to hear it beeping. So I keep it by my side even when I'm sleeping. Bing bong all day long. Bing bong all day long. Bing bong all day long. Even when I'm sleeping. With my phone I play alone. I don't need my brother. Soon they'll make a brand new app to replace my mom. Look, it's a surprise. surprise! Wow, this is great! Now I've got my own fixie phone. It's just like you've got. Well, pretty close. Tom Thomas! Tom Thomas, let me use your phone to call myself. I need to find my phone. Oh, wow. You've changed everything in here. Where am I? I guess I'm Papus. <laughs> what a funny name you came up with for me. <laughs> Nolik, just stop. I don't have time for your fooling around. What? Who is that? That's, uh, not Nolik. Who is this? Do you know who I just called? Does anyone know who this phone belongs to out here? Oh, your mother found it. I'm coming. We'll fix those numbers later. Ugh, Papus is gonna really give it to us. Give me your phone, Tom Thomas, and I'll delete all the Fixie's numbers from it. But how can I call you up, then? Why would you have to call us? We're always close by. The backpack. All right, homework's all done. Time to play? Tom Thomas, is that how you pack your backpack? Why not? What's wrong with it? I don't know how you think you're going to find anything at all in there. I will, too. Then go and find your ruler. Here you go. An eraser? Hang on, I'll get it. Where is it? Uh, you can't find it. What a shame. It's because this backpack is so lousy. The backpack is just fine. If you don't want to lose anything, you gotta pack it carefully. Or have a pack mat that can just hand everything to you. Oh, yeah! That's just what I need a pack mat. Only fixies have pack mats. And I'm gonna have one. I'll make my own. <laughs> There's no way. Way? Because I'll help him do it. Sure, Nolik. A backpack is a bag with shoulder straps attached. It was invented to make it easier to carry heavy loads for long distances and also for freeing up the hands. Backpacks help us maintain good posture and avoid slouching by putting the load's weight onto our back muscles and our spine. And you can fit so many things into a backpack, especially if the backpack has lots of separate compartments and everything is packed nice and neatly. The first backpacks were quite heavy and uncomfortable. They were made out of wood and leather. These kinds of backpacks were worn by ancient hunters. Later on, lighter backpacks appeared that were made out of canvas and became quite popular with travelers and soldiers. Today's backpacks are so light that even kids can carry them. <laughs> Testing of the world's first pack of mat design, especially for humans, begins! Ready? Ready to go! First thing out of your backpack, uh, I mean pack mat, an eraser! Got it! Watch me! Ooh. A pen! Your blue one! Got it! Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We're experiencing technical problems. We need a break. Testing of the world! I know, first. I know. Just start. Take out the eraser! Mm hmm. <laughs> we'll say you did it. Take out the blue pen! Oh, wow! The ruler's next! <laughs> That's some pack of mat you got! <laughs> Class! Testing of the world's first pack of mat designers! And where's uh, Nolik? Don't worry.
worry. He'll come later. Testing. All right already. Let's get it started. Go ahead. The eraser. We've seen that twice already. The blue pen. Can you take out the ruler? Sure I can. Drum roll, please. Whoa. It's not possible. Let me see. Huh. Now I get it. Why don't you take out your science book? Science book. <laughs> Cuckoo, did you get the textbook? <laughs> There's no way. It's huge. Yeah. Some inventors you are. <laughs> your invention calls for a little improvement, and I know what it is. What? Just make sure that when you put things into your backpack, you do it neatly. Do it neatly. Takes forever and it's boring. I'm gonna show you how to make it fun. Ha <laughs> ha! Whenever it's a school day, a backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. Your pencils, books, and papers will fit inside indeed. We'll fit inside, we'll fit inside, we'll fit inside indeed. Without a backpack on your back. Whenever you go hiking, a backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. Whatever you've collected will fit inside indeed. We'll fit inside, we'll fit inside, we'll fit inside indeed. Without a backpack on your back, you won't get by. You won't succeed, but with a backpack. The Piggy Bank. Mwah. Tom Thomas, why are you throwing away your money? That's not what I'm doing. I'm storing it. This is a piggy bank. Oh, here's another coin. I don't like its snout. That's one very suspicious looking pig. Are you positive your money's safe with her? Don't worry. Whatever I put into my bank here is not getting back out. This piggy bank won't give up a cent. You greedy piggy! Come on, Nolik. Simka must have taught you about how banks work. Humans came up with the idea of piggy banks because they wanted a good place to save their coins. For storing lots of money, people use a safe, a large metal box with a very strong lock. Now that kind of piggy bank's almost impossible to break open. The biggest safes are in banks. Banks use them to store their customers' money and other valuables. There are even safes in banks that are whole rooms. You'd need an awful lot of change to fill up one of these piggy banks. So why are you saving up all this money? For roller skates. How much more do you need to save? I don't know. I can't see if there's enough in there. Then just go and open it. But there's no way to do that. The only way is to smash it real hard. So smash it. Nyeh, -uh, forget it. I have nothing to put my money into. But what if there's already enough for roller skates? And what if there's not? All right, then I guess I'll count your money for you. Tidish! Oh, whoa! Tom Thomas, you've got a fortune in here! There are many different kinds of money, and they're not just coins, either. Long ago, people paid each other with shells and squirrel skins and even parrot feathers. And, of course, metal coins are more convenient than any of those things. And paper money is even more convenient than coins. One piece of paper can be worth as much as a hundred coins or even a thousand. All that needs to be done is to print more zeros on it, and that's all. Today, humans can pay for almost anything without paper money or coins whatsoever. If you have enough money in the bank, 
You can just walk into a store, give the cashier your bank card, and take your purchase home with you without handing over any money. The bank knows how much money you spend, and they pay the store for you later. It's so convenient. So, will you count them? Here we go. One coin! And two coins? Wait, Nolik, what one coin, two coins? What are you counting? You have to add together all of the different numbers. Huh. You should have told me that before. Uh, I never learned how to. Yeah, that's what I figured. Come on out. Hut! 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 What can I do? What if you try stacking the coins so they're like stairs? That's what I'm already doing! Oh, oh. Why don't you try tilting the piggy bank over? Hang on. Stop! I'm getting buried! Put it back the way it was before! This is worse! Ah! Just put the pig down! No, like, hang in there, please. I'll get some thread and lower it down to you. What? Just smash your piggy bank. But I like it. And what, you don't like me? Of course I like you. Well, who do you like more? You're my friend, aren't you? Of course. Then smash the piggy bank, will you? Okay, Nolik, I'm gonna do it. Are you okay? I'm okay. <sighs> Thank you, Tom Thomas. Thank you, my friend. No problem. At least now you can count up how much money you have. Nah, there's no reason to do it. There's no way it's enough for roller skates. You sure? What a shame. But now you've got all of this money here to buy a piggy bank that's totally brand new. 